further ado, please help me welcome Jenny Weaver. Jenny, how are you doing tonight? Hello. I'm doing amazing. I'm, a, I'm pumped. I'm excited. I know the people of God are ready. They're ready to hear what God has. And thank you for that intro. I'm always so blessed to be with you. You are truly a modern day John the Baptist. You are truly preparing the way for the Lord. And you are just an incredible person. I always tell my following, guys, Isaiah loves people like truly loves people and really loves God. So thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for that introduction. I really appreciate it. I'm excited <laughs> to have you back on. Listen, guys, you guys wrote us, you called us, you text us, you messaged us, you emailed us saying, when are you going to get Jenny back on? When are you? And Jenny, this was a week after we had you on. I was like, well, I can't just keep asking her every single week to be on. And so I said, let's just give it a week or two. We'll ask her to come back on again. And so I'm so glad you're on, Jenny. One of the things that God has been speaking to you and God has been speaking to me, and this is a word, guys, for the body of Christ, is that this is a time of warfare. The Bible says in Jeremiah, my six that a false prophet i feel the holy ghost already i'm gonna start freaking out here but a false prophet declares peace when there is no peace and right now in the spirit realm we are in a time of warfare we are in a time of deliverance we are in a time where the enemy is assaulting america he's assaulting the body of christ and so this is not the time to be preaching your best life now i i think that's a great message praise god god is a god of peace god is a god of love but when you preach the right thing at the wrong time you get labeled biblically according in Jeremiah 6 as a false prophet this is the hour and I'm preaching wow. to pastors I'm preaching to leaders I'm preaching to people in the chat this is the time and the hour of breakthrough I feel the Lord saying tonight that we have our heel on the head of the serpent that tonight the serpent is going to be crushed in Jesus name that we got the devil against the ropes we got the devil on the run that we've wore him out and that tonight's going to be a knockout blow in Jesus name me and Jenny we were talking earlier we're believing tonight guys that there is going to be breakthrough like never before Jenny one of the things I've been praying about today and I've been believing is those of you that have been trying to get free for years you've been trying to get delivered you've been trying to get healed you've been trying to break rejection I know many people message me saying I've been dealing with so much rejection the spirit of rejection has been on my life and I'm telling you I believe tonight is gonna be a night where those chains are broken those unbreakable chains where you've tried every prayer you've anointed every room you've done everything and you've said Isaiah I'm weary I'm tired I can't break three free I believe one of the reasons if you could just turn me down a tad, tad bit in your uh, iPad I think it's echoing back a little bit here Jenny but one of the things guys I think we don't realize is that sometimes these strongholds not a demon get cast out not a curse not a generational thing perfect thank you but these are strongholds that the enemy has built in your life so we're going to get into that later I want to first talk about we, me and Jenny were talking about this early is the spirit of rejection oftentimes I've seen Jenny that this spirit has attacked people in the womb Jenny was asking me earlier what's one of the most common spirits you ever deal with and I told her the spirit of confusion and then next would be the spirit of rejection this is a very strong spirit many people get this spirit in the womb a lot of people don't realize you can get demonic spirits in the womb in Luke 1 15 it says John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb which shows us biblically it's possible to be filled with a spirit in the womb and how many know if you can get filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb you can definitely get filled with a demonic spirit in the womb I've done many deliverances, Jenny, where I dealt with people and the demons that I've been here since the womb. I came with the womb. A lot of times during pregnancy, parents say, well, I didn't really want the baby. I didn't really want the, the, the kid. It was a mistake. It was an accident. And when you speak that over and you neglect the baby, even in the womb, oftentimes I found that it opens up the spirit of rejection. And I believe tonight, Jenny, as you share about this, as we preach about this, I believe that God is going to break the spirit of rejection off of you guys tonight. I'm ready. I'm listen, Jenny, as you share, I'm open. I'm saying, Lord, if there's a spirit of rejection in my life, do deliverance on me right here live on air. I have no pride. I'm humbling myself saying, Lord, I want breakthrough. I want deliverance. I know the Lord's been speaking to you about this, Jenny. I would love for you to just yeah. touch on and share just about that spirit of rejection that you've seen in people's lives. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Isaiah, I think that's where we all need to be. We all need to be in the place. Listen, I don't, it doesn't matter if you're a minister. It doesn't matter if you've been saved since literal birth. It doesn't matter if you just got saved yesterday. We should all now position our hearts to say, God, if there be anything within me, God, mm. I'm asking you right now to search my heart and God, get it out because so many people are bound up. And Isaiah, when I tell you, when I travel, one of the main demons that I've encountered is the spirit of rejection. And it's coupled and likes to work as you've taught many times with other demons. And so um, I know we're not even going to go into the king, a Christian have a demon because that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. But I 
I was a Christian, I was a spirit filled Christian, and I was completely demonized by witchcraft and the occult and hatred and rage and rejection and almost every perverted spirit and unclean thing that you could think of or even name. It was just, it, it was crazy. And I was on the platform. Mm. I told everybody that I loved the Lord and I was completely just demonized. And I, I use that word because I know that's how Isaiah has been teaching you guys. If you're following my ministry, it's the same way that I describe it. Um, and so rejection can come in from the womb and we're going to pray. And if you're on here and you say, that's me, I know that I'm struggling this area. I want you to just type in the comments, say, that's me. No shame, no fear. This is a safe place and you need to be transparent. And this season, God come is on. calling us to confess one to another that we may be healed. It's not time to hide. It's not time to look prideful. It's not time to say, oh, well, I don't know these people on this live stream or on this YouTube stream. No, now is the time to get free. And I'm telling you, there is a freedom and it, it is through Jesus Christ and through the blood of Jesus. And so let me tell you, a lot of times rejection can enter into a person's life when they don't feel loved, when they didn't have that connection, when they feel pushed out, pushed aside, looked over, forgotten, thrown away. And a lot of times that does happen even in the womb. And I know mm. that sounds crazy, but it does. If someone's contemplated abortion, if Come the on. mother was thinking, oh, this child is going to be a financial burden. And so the parents were conversing and saying, oh, well, how are we going to take care of this child? Believe it or not, guys. That can be an open door for demons to come in and go, okay, we're setting up camp here. Wow. We can make this child for the rest of their life feel like they were unwanted, like they were rejected. And that will cause them to really not be able to connect to an ever loving, an come everlasting on. father who loves them more than anything. They will have difficulty knowing who they are and whose they are because of this rejection. And so Trust me when I tell you it is a scheme of the enemy and we are called to call it out. And so tonight we serve notice to every demon of rejection, every stronghold, every demon of abandonment that's been keeping you bound up in the name of Jesus. They must go now. And so I just want to say this as I feel led of the Lord. I'm commanding every distraction to stop now in the name of Jesus. We pray over these airwaves right now, and we say that this word will go forth unhindered. We Come release on. the angels of heaven to go forth and spread this word to the north, south, east, and west. Draw them in, Holy Ghost. Draw them in so that they can know that there is only freedom through the name of Jesus Christ. And so I'm praying that you will be able to Stay right here on this broadcast and go all the way through. If somebody calls you, do not answer. Come on. You have to stay right here. If you feel all of a sudden, some of you may feel, oh, I'm getting really sleepy. Just out of nowhere, you are just so tired. The devil is a liar. Come on. Stay right here. There's freedom for you. And so um, for me, I was born uh, addicted to heroin. My parents were heroin addicts. And so my day of birth in... Instead of everyone celebrating, um, it wasn't really a celebration. It was it was kind of like, you know, a tragedy that happened. And my mother was withdrawing from heroin and severely, and so was I. And so the enemy tried to come in from the womb and really kill me and take my life. And so I've experienced that growing up when I got uh, to the point where I could actually remember things that were happening in the family. I remember a lot of abuse. I remember my parents fighting all the time and that fear of my parents are going to leave. My parents are going to split up and what's going to happen to the family. That deep fear that many of you have probably experienced. Um, a lot of the arguing and then taking out their anger on us children. I'm one of eight children. And so being beat severely and whipped and not having food and uh, parents would, they would run out and fight, and we would be in the house like, when is, when is mom and dad going to get home? They would literally run the streets. My mom would run after my dad. And so, and she would actually come back to the house. And she, I remember one time she, she rang the doorbell, and we had locked up the houses. We were so scared. that they'd been hours they'd been gone. And my older sister went to the door. She looked out the peephole, and she didn't even recognize my mom. 
And so we opened the door and we saw that my mother had been beat so severely with a uh, two by four, really, to her face was disfigured. So that rage came into the house and that spirit of violence began to just go through all of us children and we would fight each other. And I remember feeling like there is no reason why you should even be alive. You're another mouth to feed. Wow. Now, see, I had already heard that in the realm of the spirit. That's what these demons of rejection and fear were literally telling me and whispering to me. I'm not talking about just as a teenager. I'm talking about as a young girl. You're causing the family to have too much financial strain. Maybe if you didn't fight so much with your sister, maybe mom and dad would stay together. Maybe you're the problem. And so from a young age, this started rejection. And I want you guys to think of this. When I'm talking about rejection, please, I want you to really just understand what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a personality trait. I am not talking about just a way that you act. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the spirit of rejection. I want you to see with, with kingdom eyes, with heavenly eyes, that this is a demon. And the point and purpose of this demon is to kill, steal, and destroy. Kill your purpose, your joy, your destiny. And even he wants to kill your life. He wants to take you out. So don't think of it as, a, oh, I've just been this way all oh, my whole life. It's just, you know, I'm just, you know, an introvert or I just, I don't feel that good about myself. I have insecurity. Okay, those are all the little symptoms from this demonic influence that's in your life. And so I have to, I have to just call it the way I see. I know Isaiah does, so that's okay. I'm going to do it too. And so um, in my home, we dealt with rejection. And I remember becoming a teenager and cutting severely and um, that, that, Spirit of rejection uh, grabbed a hold of the spirit of murder, and both of these spirits would torment me. And the spirit of murder would say, Go kill your mother while she's sleeping tonight. Go into the kitchen drawer and take that big butcher knife, and you could go in and you could literally slit her throat. I am talking about 13 years old. I fantasized about killing my mother. Why? Because that spirit of rejection that tried to take my life as an infant had already planted all of this stuff in my mind over all of these years. Using the people around me, it wasn't that I was a little girl and I said, okay, I'm opening this door for the devil because I know people say that, well, you opened the door for the devil, so that's on you. How in the world would I, an infant in my mother's womb, open the door for the devil? So guys, these things can be passed on. I know Isaiah's talked about generational curses and word curses and all of that. And I've done a live on that as well. Guys, these things, the devil uses demons work with curses and they do that so that they can kill, steal, and destroy. And so that was not me opening that door. Many of you, if you understand what I'm saying, I'm going to do like Isaiah says, put up a one in the chat. Put up a one in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. Some of you have been molested. Some of you have been raped. Some of you have had terrible things happen. And so that was an open door for spirits of rejection to take their hold in your life. And so tonight is a night of freedom. And I want to just give, give you my testimony so that you can know I've walked through this. And I feel the fire of God right now. As I'm talking, I feel the fire of God. I know that people are being delivered right now in the name of Jesus. And so... Um, I started to cut my wrist. I wanted to kill myself. I heard this all the time. I heard these, these voices and I actually thought it was my own conscious. I thought it was me and it was kill yourself. Go ahead, do it. Come on. It'll be, it'll be, you'll be in peace. You won't have any more, any more tears, any more crying. You won't have any stress. You won't have anyone yelling at you. You won't have anyone hitting you. You won't have the kids at school making fun of you. And so that's what I heard. And then on top of that, going to school and starting to get vitiligo, which if you don't know is white spots on the skin, people literally bullied me. And so the enemy just kept saying, oh, if that didn't take you out, if I didn't get your parents to make you feel like you were unwanted, I'll go ahead and use the kids at school. How many of you on here have dealt with that where you said, I felt like I was humiliated or embarrassed? Guys, those, I'm calling out every open door that the enemy can use humiliation, embarrassment, bullying, torment, all of these things make you feel like you have been rejected 
by someone. Now, some of you are experiencing absolute rejection from people, and some of you are experiencing a demon telling you that you are being rejected. And in fact, actually, you're not being rejected. This happens all the time on social media. I know Isaiah experiences this probably more than I do, where if you don't talk to somebody, you don't answer that message, you don't you know, say, call their name or, or say their prayer request and all of a sudden they feel rejected. That did not mean that we actually were rejecting you. That spirit is literally using the littlest thing to get you to think that you are not loved, you are not accepted, but Jesus says that you are his beloved. Jesus came running strong after you. And so tonight, I just wanted to cover some things. I know I have so many books and so many notes, but I just feel the Lord wants me to speak from my heart. And so guys, as I was growing up and I was getting into all these things, that's when it opened the door for witchcraft. You guys have probably already seen that video. And that whole, that whole thing took me into a world of drugs, which again is another, when you're seeing somebody using drugs, you are seeing the manifestation of the spirit of rejection. It's working with witchcraft and all these other things. But you are seeing somebody that has been rejected to the point where they are now rejecting themselves. They are saying, I don't even care about my own life to the point of I, I won't even take care of my life. I will literally fill my body with poison and possibly even die every time that I use this drug because I'm rejecting myself. That's what's happening when, when you see um, alcoholism, when you see uh, drug addicts, when you see people abusing pills. That is what's going on. And so we have to start getting free from these things. Many of you have been called by the Lord to do great exploits and it seems like you go forward and then the devil just snatches you back. As soon as you step out and God says, start doing Facebook lives and start doing, uh, go hold intercessory prayer in your house once a week. And you step out and the first person that says, I can't make it. Or the first person that says, oh, I didn't want to share your life. All of a sudden, now you're not called. Now you're giving up. Now you, you, you didn't hear from God right. Listen, that is a manifestation of the spirit of rejection. And he comes in every single time like this. Bam. No, you're not going to move forward. Oh, you think that God loves you? Oh, well, how come he didn't answer your prayer to get healed? How come he didn't answer your prayer when you needed that bill? How come you're still broke? How come this devil, the devil is a liar? Let's put that in the chat. The devil is a liar. And so when you're moving forward and you're trying to do things in God and you want to start praying and then all of a sudden you feel like, oh, I'm not doing it right. Oh, God's not listening to me. Oh, maybe I'm, you know, I've done this or I've done that. And it is just shame, rejection, abandonment. And you just hear all of this torment. And that's what demons do. They are tormentors and they cause you to just completely take your eyes off of God and put it on you and on your circumstance and on your situation so that you can never truly follow after what God's called you to do. So um, many times you'll see rejection form um, when people have, uh, I'm gonna, let me give you this example because this is a, a huge one. Um, and parents, they want a boy so bad and they go, oh, we cannot wait for a boy. We cannot wait for a boy. We can't wait for a boy. And then they get a girl. Okay, and then what happens? There's this letdown. There's this oh, very slight disappointment. They'll go, oh, I'm so happy. But what's happening is, guys, there's so much in the realm of the spirit. I wish you could really see. And so maybe the father is going, oh, well, I really wanted a boy. And so there's that disconnect. Um, rejection can also come in is if the mother's had a, um, a very traumatic birth. And the child had to be taken away from the mother. Maybe um, they had some things, some complications going on. And so that connection was not made. And if the child has to stay, um, you know, away from the mother for several days and even weeks, I've seen this. And they're trying to work on the child and get the child better or the mother's very sick and they are not connected. Many times you will see, if you do interviews on people, you will see, wow, this person, when that happened, that actually is the doorway that rejection came in because there was no connection to the mother or the parents. And so the child was isolated. The child was alone for several hours a day when they should have been with the parent. And so these are the things that we're seeing, guys. And I just wanted to lay the, the, the groundwork out there so that you will know. If you're listening, you're going, 
wow, I've always felt in my life that, you know, I wasn't accepted. I've always felt like I was the weird one. I've always felt like I was so strange, like I just didn't fit in. Many of you are dealing with the spirit of rejection. And in the name of Jesus, you will be set free tonight. Um, so I just wanted to cover that with you guys because I feel like so many of you, you write me and you say, I need to be free. Well, God will set you free. Um, I remember when I cried out to the Lord and I said, God, help me. And it was literally that it was, it wasn't anything big. It wasn't anything like, you know, a huge long prayer. And God began to rip me out of that drug world and rip me out of everything that I had been in. And then he took me through the beautiful process of being delivered. I got saved guys, but I needed to be delivered. I was singing on the platform, but I desperately needed to be delivered. I was reading my Bible. And at night I was tormented by demons and night terrors. And, um, I would walk through a hallway and I would see, um, shadows and different figures in the house. And I'm over here thinking, what is all this? I'm saved. This is not, this is not allowed to happen in my life. And it was, it was happening in my life. And, uh, even though I said, God, come into my heart, I did not renounce those things. And so they still had a, a, they had permission. I'll say it like this. They had permission because I was doing things at that point in my life, even as you know, an adult, I had opened doors and allowed them to come in. I had bitterness against my husband. I had unforgiveness towards my husband. Unforgiveness and bitterness. Hear me when I say this. If you don't get anything from this live, get this. Unforgiveness and bitterness is act, gives the devil access. It is a access point to demons. They are allowed to pass right on through and to do what they want to do. It's like you sign a permission slip and saying, yeah, you can come on in. And it is biblical. It is in the Bible. Jesus gives a parable about it. You guys, you give the devil access when you do not forgive. It says that he will hand him over to the tormentors. And so you have to forgive. If you've been molested, I understand that that is a traumatic, horrific thing. Nobody should ever have to go through that. If you've been raped, if you've been abused, if you've been verbally abused or anything like that, gone through a divorce, mistreated by leadership in the church, um, misunderstood by friends, you've had close friends and they separated and they did you wrong or whatever the case may be. I understand that that person did that. And we're not saying we excuse that behavior because some of this behavior is unexcusable. It is not tolerable. It is not okay. But do not be held in a prison where you actually have locked yourself in there at some point. When you say, I'm not going to forgive, you're taking the key from the devil and you're saying, you don't even have to stand here. Keep myself right here. I'll be the guard for this prison. And you lock yourself in there and it's like you can't get out and you're trying to get out, but you're also holding the door. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. You have to put it in God's hands. And if you're, you're saying right now, I don't even know how to do that, or I thought I forgave them, but you thought you forgave them. But every single time you think about that incident, every single time you talk about it, all you can't even control your emotions. It's like you begin to shake, you begin to tremble. You don't even like to drive down certain streets or mention people's names because that thing is not healed yet. That thing has not been really dealt with yet. And so the only thing that you can do at that point is say, God, in my own strength, I cannot do this, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus looked at his tormentors. Jesus looked at the abusers. Jesus looked at the people that literally spit in his face, punched him, ripped his beard, did all kinds of things to him where he was unrecognizable as a man. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Many of you have suffered rejection at the hands of people and demons have used these people to do this to you, to steal your destiny. And I'm telling you, they don't even know. Some of them don't even know the full extent of what they have done. They do not even know that you're living in a prison. They do not know that you've been tormented for 20, 30 40 years. Some of you are older women, older men. You've been tormented your whole life. These people that are doing this and have been used as pawns by the devil, they do not understand exactly what they have done. So you have to release them. And rejection, it loves to, to grab a hold of fear. 
And so it takes that spirit of fear and say, come on, let's go do some real damage. And many times people feel rejected and will say they're dealing with a fear of rejection and they're scared and they're tormented. And then they, like Isaiah said, confused and they don't understand. Is that God's voice? Is that my voice? Is, am I supposed to? Am I not? Am I this? Am I that? And it's this whirlwind of just demonic torment. And tonight, I feel God so strongly, God wants you to be set free. If you want to be set free, I want you to say in the comments, I want to be set free. Say it like you mean it. I want to be set free. I'm ready to forgive that person. I'm ready to let that thing go. I'm ready to move forward in life now. I'm ready to cut all of this mess out of my life. I'm ready to take the past and sever that cord that keeps dragging me back like I'm a prisoner. I'm ready to sever every cord, cut it off. We're calling it out from the very root. We're not talking about the little symptoms that are going on. Some of you are experiencing physical symptoms from rejection. We're gonna deal with all that, but we have to get to the very root of the thing. We have to get to that unforgiveness. Some of it is bitterness. Some of it's been passed down from your ancestors and generation to generation. But I know a power that breaks generational curses. And I know a power that makes every demon in hell tremble. And it's Jesus Christ, the mighty deliverer. It's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He goes before you. He's standing with some of you right now and he's ready to deliver you. You feel like you, you, you don't even know how to sit in your chair right now. I'm about to run. God is going to deliver you with a mighty hand. And I know that he is because that's who he is. It's what he does. He is not waiting to deliver. He's delivering now in the name of Jesus. And so I know Isaiah is going to talk about strongholds. I don't want to be too long, but I do want to walk you through some prayers. And I, I didn't cover everything because God's going to cover it. God's going to cover it. And we're going to do these prayers. Um, I just had one of my admins send me these prayers and I love them. I'm going to have you say some things and then I'm just going to pray from my heart. I know Isaiah is okay with this. He told me to pray. And so that's what we're doing. So I want you to, um, right now, let's just go ahead and just let's, let's repent. So if you need to repent of anything, if you need, if you have anything in your heart, any thoughts, any things that you've said, anything that you've come in alignment with, anything that you've partnered with, any thought, any belief that goes against the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God is that you are loved, you are beloved, you are healed, you are set free. If anything goes against that, that you've been thinking, you've been feeling, you've been you know, partnering with, and even confessing out of your own mouth, like you say, I'm not worthy. You say, oh, I'm ugly, or I hate the way I look in pictures, or he'll never love me, or I don't know how to pray, or I can't hear any of those things. Are you just confessing, confessing all this negative stuff about you? I want you to go ahead and repent of all that. I know it sounds crazy. Like, why would I repent of that? That's how I feel. Because it goes against the knowledge of God. And we are not to go against the knowledge of God. God never said that you're unworthy. God never said that you're ugly. God never said that you're unwanted. That is a lie from the pits of hell. And so we're going to confess some things. If you've had unforgiveness, if you have any sin in your life, if you've been doing things, you know that you are not supposed to be doing, even in lifestyles, if you've made a lifestyle choice that goes against God's word, I'm calling you to repentance. I remember being in high school and swearing off men and saying, oh, I'm going to be a lesbian now because uh, they, women treat me better and men are dogs and men are disgusting. Why? Because I was so hurt inside. I was so rejected inside. That was my remedy, but that was not my identity. That was not who God called me to be. And so you need to repent of all of that, even lustful thoughts, even um, just putting anything above God, uh, turning to witchcraft, turning to psychics, having um, certain crystals to try to get gain some sort of power because you feel powerless. You feel rejected. You don't know if God's really hearing you. So now you're turning to all these things in the world. We're going to repent of that right now. So go ahead and just name it. Say it. Say, God, I repent of this in the name of Jesus. God, I'm laying this before you. God, I repent. I'm asking you, Lord, for your forgiveness, and I receive your forgiveness. I receive what you've done for me on the cross. I receive it now in the name of Jesus. 
And then what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you declare some of these things. And then I'm going to pray in between these declarations. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to declare this. I am who Jesus wants me to be. And I am here because he wants me. Come on, say it. Say it out loud now. I am not a mistake. Jesus makes no mistakes, and I will choose what Jesus wants for me, even if it goes against my own feelings or emotions. And now I break every demonic power off of you from your parents' side, every negative word that was spoken over you in the name of Jesus Christ. I break every demonic power, spirit of rejection. I'm commanding you every stronghold, Every demon that you brought into this person, I'm commanding you to come up and out now in the name of Jesus. The blood of Christ is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. And the angels now torment you in Jesus' mighty name. Every uncaring, unloving thought in the name of Jesus is broken in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to say this. I agree that I was not a mistake to Jesus and I bless and accept my conception. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. We break off right now worry. We break off abandonment in the name of Jesus. We break off every spirit of fear, every unclean demon of fear. I command you in the name of Jesus, come up and out of that person. In Jesus' name, loose your hold now. The blood of Jesus is against you. Bitterness, I command you to come up and out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of unforgiveness, up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, that you love them. Receive now the Father's love. Some of you know Jesus and you know that Jesus loves you, but you have never known the Father's love. You can't even fathom them that God the Father loves you. You've seen God the Father as, as mean, angry God, as the one that you don't really know like that. But God wants me to tell you tonight. He said, I love you with an everlasting love. I love you so much that I sent my son to die for you. So I want you to receive God's love and everything that was done, we cover it in the blood of Jesus. We cover your memory. We cover your sleep. We cover your emotions with the blood of Jesus, your decision-making now with the blood of Jesus. And we burn out every demon with the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, mighty name. Come on, I know there's many people right now, Jenny, in the chat saying they're getting deliverance, they're getting free. I hear, I see people right Jesus. now saying I feel lighter. I see someone say I'm coughing, I'm yawning, I'm spitting up. I'm telling you guys, tonight is your night to get delivered, to get free. Jenny, one of the things I love that you were sharing was this is not knowledge that we got from just reading something or somebody else's story, but this is your story of how God broke this off you. I've been reading the comments the whole time you've been talking, Jenny, and there is literally hundreds. We have over 3,000 people watching, 3,100 right now watching hundreds Thank of people you. saying this is my story this is what I've gone through this is what's happening to me and tonight guys we are saying God is breaking it off of you in Jesus name you're going to walk out of this different you're going to walk out of this free and one thing I want to talk about strongholds here Jenny but one of the things I want to say yes. is a lot of times Jenny when we preach on strongholds when we talk about strongholds they're very misconstrued a lot of people don't know much about them or what they are a lot of deliverance books don't talk about strongholds some people think you cast them out some people think you break them but not only a lot of times when we preach on strongholds we think of demonic but I want to tell you guys something the devil is not the only one with strongholds psalms 8 2 says through praise you've established a stronghold against your enemy to silence the foe and the avenger so guys you have to understand you now jenny weaver is a praise leader she's a worship leader she knows this more than anybody it is through praise that god will establish his stronghold against the kingdom of darkness the word stronghold literally means a place that has been fortified to protect something from attacks job had a stronghold around him remember y'all and the bible says satan couldn't touch him and it was once that stronghold was removed the enemy was able to wreak havoc on his life when we praise Many people think praise is just a song. Many people think praise is just shouting. Guys, you have to understand, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight that every time you praise, every time you worship, that you're raising up a fortification in your spirit, that you're putting walls around your spirit, man, that you're putting up defenses against the enemy. When we're praying, we're putting up walls that prevent the fiery darts of the enemy, something supernatural. Come on, I don't care where you are. We're not doing a natural live stream tonight. We're not doing a monotone live stream tonight. This is not your average live stream. Listen. 
Here is the truth. Th there wouldn't be 3,100 people on if we were just over here blowing smoke. This is a supernatural live stream, revival lifestyle of breakthrough, of deliverance, of the fire of God. And even as we're preaching, I hear the Lord saying that I'm building a stronghold around you. I'm building a stronghold around your marriage. I'm building a stronghold. Come on, the devil's not the only one with strongholds. I'm building a stronghold around your mind. I'm building God's strongholds so that the enemy won't keep stealing your lunch. The enemy won't keep beating you up. Stronghold and praise, a lifestyle of praise brings up defenses against the enemy. There are some attacks, Jenny, I'll just say this, that I praised my way through. If it wasn't for my praise life, if it wasn't for my worship life, I wouldn't be here. And I wonder if there's anyone tonight that we're preaching to in the chat that says, if it wasn't for my praise, if it wasn't for my shout. Some people say, why do you shout so loud? Because the warfare is so intense. Why do you pray so crazy? Listen, guys, if you've ever seen me praise, I can't afford to be calm. I can't afford to be silent. I understand that there is a war there is an adversary and my praise and my worship is bringing deliverance is bringing breakthrough i love how it says jenny not only does it build strongholds when you praise but it david says it also silences the foe and the avenger i love this praise shuts the mouth of demons the bible says yes. in psalms 8 when you praise you're shutting the mouth of demons. That is why Saul had wow. David come praise. And every time David would praise, what would happen? Saul's demons would shut their mouth. Praise mm. shuts the mouth of demonic powers. Isaiah, Jenny, I'm always hearing demons. I'm always getting attacked at night. I'm always hearing voices. And I want to ask you, what does your praise life look like? Praise is how you tell the devil to shut up. Oh. Praise is how you shut the mouth of rejection, shut the mouth of fear, shut the mouth of anxiety. And oftentimes when God would win battles, he would send the praisers first. Nahum 1 7 says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. So the Lord right now, and Jenny, if there's ever been a time where we need God's strongholds to raise up, it's now. A time of trouble, yeah. a time of storm where America is uncertain. I just got another alert on my phone today that California is going all into stay at home, complete lockdown, everything again. Where do we turn wow. when we have anxiety? Where do we turn when we have depression? Where do we turn when the troubles of life come into our boat? We turn to Jesus. He is our stronghold. You look at Acts 16, uh, Paul and Silas were in prison. What was the prison? It was a stronghold. How did they get out of the stronghold? They praised their way out. Some of you have been waiting. I'm preaching tonight. I'm fired up tonight. Some of you have been waiting for somebody to lay hands on you. You've been waiting for someone to cast the demon out of you. And the Lord is saying, I wonder if there's anyone in this place tonight that's one praise away from getting delivered. Acts 16, Paul was one praise away from getting delivered. And the Bible says in the midnight hour, which midnight is the darkest point of, of time, it's five hours before light, five hours after dark, after the sun goes down, it's the darkest moment is midnight. And God says in the darkest moment, all you got to do is lift up a praise. In the darkest moment, all you got to do is lift up a shout. And it is in that praise it is in that shout that God begins to shake the strongholds. And I just want to prophesy this over you that strongholds are beginning to shake. I want to prophesy yes. that strongholds are beginning to break. If you can praise your way out in the physical realm, how many know that you can praise your way out in the spiritual realm? And as you worship, as you shout, you're going to shout your way out. Come on, somebody needs to type that in the chat. Something happens, guys, when you begin to open up your mouth. And some of you, your prayer, where's your praise life been? You say, I don't have nothing to praise about. Some of the most powerful praises are when you have nothing to shout about, when you have nothing to praise about, when the home's getting foreclosed on, when the kids are still out there. I'm not praising so it happens. I'm praising like it happened. I'm praising Ooh. like he's already saved my kids. I'm praising like he's already healed my marriage. I'm praising like my body's already healed. I know what the doctor's report says I know that I got another medical bill in the mail today I know that I got another utility bill in the mail today I know that I got another oh. text from my wife saying she wants to leave and she's lost love and the passion's gone I know my kid texts me again asking me to bail him out of the local jail but I'm telling you I'm gonna praise as if my kids an evangelist I'm gonna shout as if God has already restored the marriage I'm gonna release a shout and a praise that breaks demonic strongholds this is why God told Joshua I'm giving you Jericho, but there are strongholds. There are walls that are preventing you from taking the land. Jenny, I know you teach this. I teach this. A lot of believers think that once you get saved, God defeats all your enemies and you don't have to get delivered. You don't have to get breakthrough. Why is Isaiah and Jenny on here again? Why is there 3,100 people watching? Doesn't they know they've already been delivered by the cross? For in Acts 8, the Bible says Philip preached and then drove out demons. Philip would have never drove out demons after he preached if getting saved completely delivers you. It's like when you get saved, it doesn't mean you're 
automatically going to get healed. It doesn't mean you're automatically going to get delivered just because your soul and your spirit and you're redeemed and you're going to heaven doesn't mean that there's not giants in the land. And oftentimes, all throughout your Bible, God would give the people land, but there were strongholds that the people had to defeat to be able to have their inheritance. And I want to come to tell you tonight that they marched around those walls seven times. They lifted up a shot of praise in Joshua 6.20, and the Bible says the walls came down. What are we trying to say tonight? We're trying to say that as we preach, as Jenny just led you through these prayers, as I'm preaching you tonight, as I'm going to share with you these things about strongholds, that walls are getting ready to break. Mindsets are getting Woo! ready to break. God's strongholds are being raised up. Now, one thing I want to say, I've never heard anyone say, once God destroys a demonic stronghold, his plan is not to leave your territory empty. His plan is not to leave your property empty. He wants to rebuild. Now, the only way for God and the devil to build is by getting permits, is by getting permission. Wow. If you're a construction worker, you know that you're not legally allowed to build anything without a permit. So the, what the devil's built in your life, you've given him a permit to build in Jesus. your life. And tonight, God... God is saying it's time to revoke the permits and say, Satan, you are done building in my life. You're done building rejection. You're done building fear. You're done building anger. Now, demonic strongholds are obviously different than God's strongholds. Demonic strongholds are fortresses the enemy builds in the mind. So anytime we see in the Bible stronghold, you got to know that this is a war in your mind. Now, the reason why the devil builds these in our mind, these are not demons, these are strongholds, is to keep us in sin cycles and wrong patterns yes. of thinking. So this is that one thing in your life. And this is where it's going to hit home here, Jenny. It's that one thing in your life that you can't shake. It's that one thing you got saved. You got delivered. Isaiah and Jenny cast demons out of you. You got healed of cancer. But there's this one thing that nobody else knows about that you just can't shake. Yes. That is a stronghold. No matter what you try to do, you can't break out of that lust. No matter what you try to do, come on, I'm preaching to Jeez. someone tonight. You can't break out of that anger. No matter what you try to do, there's something there holding on. Now think about this. Not only is a stronghold a fortress, but think about this. It's a stronghold, a stronghold, mm -hmm. okay? This is something where the enemy grips you and you say, Isaiah, there's one thing I can't shake. And people are typing in the chat, someone just said smoking, someone just said pornography, someone just said lust, anger, addiction, anxiety, fear. These are things you cannot shake. A stronghold of the mind, listen to this, is based on a lie that Satan has established in our thinking. So these are satanic, Satan is building these. It's a statement or a way of thinking that we count as true that is actually false when this happens when we repeatedly listen or entertain the lie a stronghold is established so how do strongholds wow. get built in the mind of a believer we just broke again our, our record for viewers a stronghold gets built when you believe the lie how do you believe the lie the devil is the accuser of the brethren but remember He's the father of lies. So understand yes. the language of Satan, the language of the kingdom of Satan is lying. It's not like the devil lies. His native tongue is lying. His language is lying. And he comes to lie to you, to tell you, you're never going to be good enough. As Jenny just said, you were a mistake. Just jump off. I had a demon tell me to jump off of a 13 story balcony two months before I got saved. And something in me wanted to do it, even though I was never suicidal. It was a demon telling me, Isaiah, just jump. Your mistake doesn't matter. No one's going to even care if you die. They'll get over it in a week. They'll stop crying. You're not here. There's no reason why you're even here. And you, you know, people, you're just, you're just a burden on people. And I came to, I came to put the spirit of depression and suicide, which we're going to talk about later on notice Ooh. and let you know that you are not a mistake. Spirit of suicide. Oh. We bind you in Jesus name. Jesus. We break you in Jesus name. The blood of Jesus is against depression. It's against suicide and these lies that the enemy has built. So when you begin to believe the lie, you empower the liar. The devil has no power until you begin to believe his lies. So these are strongholds. Now, strongholds are not built in one moment or in one lie. They are built over time, just like a castle. Remember, strongholds are fortresses. They're castles. Just like a fortress is built over time. You can't build a fortress in one day. You can't build a castle in one day. They're built over time. So these are the stronghold. These could be strongholds of unbelief. These could be strongholds of addiction. These could be strongholds of anxiety, depression, strongholds of racism. How many know right now we're seeing a massive stronghold of racism being challenged in America? We're seeing it be surfaced in America. It could be anything. So let's look at this, Jenny. This is your Bible. This is where we're going to see our main text for strongholds. Second Corinthians 10 verses three through six says this. 
Yes. For we walk in the flesh, but we do not war according to the flesh. So that's what you need to understand. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but they are mighty before God to the casting down of strongholds. So strongholds, they collapse. Strongholds get cast down. Strongholds get pulled down. They don't get cast out. Come on, guys. Is this good preaching? Type one. On. They get cast that's down. Good. And then this is what Paul says. Casting down. So what are we casting down? Strongholds. But what are they? Imaginations and yes. every high thing that is exalted against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought, so we already know now these strongholds are in the mind, into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being in readiness to avenge all disobedience, then your obedience or then when your obedience shall be made full. So understand the first thing Paul says is, the battle that we're preaching on tonight, we're not preaching just to people. Paul says we preach to principalities. So we, me and Jenny are coming against the entire satanic kingdom tonight. We're coming against suicide, anger, depression, fear, rejection, confusion, Jezebel, lust, Ahab, Aphrodite. I don't care what spirit Jeez. you're dealing with. We are coming against, when you come against one spirit, remember guys, you're coming against an entire satanic kingdom when we come to it. Now, when we come against Satan... How many know, now I know you guys are like, you live in California, so you must not have any guns. Listen, I got four little girls. I have a six-year-old Jenny, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a new. We call her just new. She's a newborn, okay? I have a new a new one. And then I have, my sister-in-law lives upstairs, my wife. So I live in a house with, how many is that? I lost track. That's six girls and me. If somebody breaks in in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning, Somebody breaks in, I don't care if I'm in California, I don't care what you believe, whether you're liberal, whether you're Republican, whether you're a Democrat, I don't care. If you break in through a window, or you break wow. in my house, Isaiah Saldivar, you can say what you guys want about this, at three in the morning, you're going to meet me out the front door and I'm not gonna have a Bible in my hand, I'm gonna have a 12 gauge, why? Because I'm not <laughs> gonna on. let intruders, Jenny, into my house and try to take from me and try to put, tie me up and try to steal from me. Okay, so Paul says, if an intruder breaks in, you can go ahead and use a shotgun or a weapon. That's why Jesus told them to bring swords. He said, bring them, but didn't say use them because understand they were not in a physical war when the Pilate's people came. They were in a, phys uh, a spiritual war. And so Paul yes. says, we can't shoot a demon. Okay, it'd be nice if Jenny, we could just go to the shooting range tomorrow. We can just go ahead and shoot every demon that we're dealing with. It'd be nice if we could just shoot a nuclear warhead on a demon. Demons cannot be fought with natural natural weapon so Paul says to defeat or cast down or pull down strongholds and if you guys aren't getting blessed tonight I'm getting blessed tonight we have to do these in the spiritual realm these are spiritual weapons we are not preaching natural we are preaching spiritual it was not a natural person that told Jenny to kill herself it was not a natural person that called me and said Isaiah take your life it was a spiritual why do we fall for the lies of the enemy and I'm gonna tell you why write this down because when the enemy speaks he tries to make us think it's us thinking that. So he says, take your life. And he wants to make you think that his voice is your voice. And I want you to yes. know that those thoughts saying, go ahead and take your life. Those thoughts saying you're never going to be good enough. Those thoughts saying God has not anointed you, called you, or chosen you. Those are thoughts from the enemy's kingdom. Those are strongholds. The racism, the anger, the bitterness, the not wanting to give, not wanting to pray, not wanting to fast. These are all strongholds that we need to break. So what do we break? Here's what Paul says. We cast down imaginations. Now, somebody said that sounds complicated. Yes. Here's what it means. An imagination simply means to form a new idea, a new principle, or a new concept. This is what we've done, Jenny, in the Ama American church. We have created imaginations of who Jesus really is. The fact that you can serve Jesus now and yourself at the same time is an imagination. Wow. The fact that you can serve God in the church and serve mammon is an imagination. The fact that you can have God's dream and the American dream is an imagination. The fact that you can live like Satan, this is what the American church teaches. Okay, I've been traveling guys for 10 years preaching in the American church. You can sure. live like Satan but just come pray the sinner's prayer and oh, praise God, you'll be able to go to heaven one day. That's that's an imagination. You can yes. mistreat people as long as you're gifted, God doesn't mind. That is an imagination. This Americanized, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the devil on those because I've already made him mad, so we might as well just keep making him mad tonight. We've already stirred up the pot tonight. This Americanized, westernized, commercialized, compromised, false, plastic, Jesus of the imagination is an invention of man. And Paul says the only way to deal with witchcraft, the only way to deal with strongholds is we have have to tear them down i've been Come for on. 10 years going into churches and tearing down imaginations going into churches and saying guys it's a stronghold to say Christians can't have demons. The devil invented that, by the way. That's a demonic That's principle. Exactly it. And it's a stronghold that wants to prevent God's people from getting deliverance. These are all strongholds in the mind. And let me talk about another one here quick, Jenny. Fantasizing 
is an open door for demons. Fantasizing uh -huh. has to do with your imagination. So we create imaginations, we create our lives with other people in our mind, and we open the door to Satan. Let me give you an example. Oftentimes, people do not just go cheat on their husband or go cheat on their wife. Very rarely does anybody one day just go cheat on their husband and wife. Here's how it happens. They imagine it first. They fantasize wow. first. It opens up the door for the action. So one day, the guy or the girl sitting there saying, man, my husband works 15 hours a day. He doesn't tell me he loves me anymore. We're not, ha we're not having sex anymore. He's not buying me stuff the way he used to. He hasn't got me flowers in months. And then what happens, Jenny? You're sitting at home all day. Your husband's out breaking his back Jeez. trying to support the family. And you're sitting there like this on your phone, scrolling through Instagram, scrolling, 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 like I'm doing now, scrolling, scrolling, Come scrolling. On. And then all of a sudden you see, oh man, look at so-and-so down the street. Look at her husband always bringing her flowers, always there. Look at, they just posted a new picture at the church. They're having a Christmas party. Look at, he just got a new promotion. He works from home. What happens? You start fantasizing, and I'm exposing the devil. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Yes, you, you are. start fantasizing what would my life be like if I married somebody different? What would my life be like if my husband was nicer? What would my life be like if my husband wasn't mm. addicted? What would my life be like if my wife would cook, if my wife would clean, if my wife was this or my wife was that? And so you're scrolling, looking at bikini pictures. Well, my wife used to look like that and she doesn't look the way. I had one guy years ago, Jenny, tell me, well, I just can't get off porn. You know, I'm getting older now. My wife doesn't look the way she used to. And I said, sir, you don't look the way you used to either. These are fantasies. These are imaginations. Well. These are when the enemy builds in, moves in. It doesn't just happen overnight. These are the way that the enemy, you fantasize. So guys, I'm telling you right now, do not sit around fantasizing about what your life would have been if you made it to there, or if you just graduated there, or if you didn't have a kid. What would have my life been like if I didn't have kids? And you start fantasizing a life outside the life that you have, outside the life of God. And I came to tell right now, everybody that has imaginations and fantasies, and it's time to break them by the blood of Jesus. It's time yes. to shatter them by the blood of Jesus. Okay, let me just go a little bit here. Jenny said I could go for it here. We're just tag team teaching here. So we destroy arguments and opinions, the Bible says, that are against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive. So again, Paul is saying strongholds are not demons. They are structures. They are mindsets. They are thought patterns that are built by the enemy, and they're in your mind, and we need to tear them down. We need to create, we need to take them captive. Okay, so the Bible says take your thoughts captive let me show you some thoughts okay i'm going to show you some thoughts that show you these are common thoughts that there is a stronghold and these are the thoughts the type of thoughts i'm trying to give you guys an identifier of how do you know if you have a stronghold so i'm going to give you some thoughts of things you need to take captive signs you have a stronghold okay things like this let me give you some thoughts i know that i get angry all the time but that's just my personality okay that's a stronghold that's a thought you need to take captive i know that pornography is wrong but at least i'm not actually going out sleeping around with people that's a stronghold i know yes. that i shouldn't be so critical and negative about everybody but i know more about those people than the other people know in the church that's a stronghold that's a thought you need captive i know that i'm being i know that being attracted to other men is wrong other than my husband but it's not like i'm having sex with them it was just merely a kiss after work I know the Bible says that sexual attraction to the same sex is a sin, but the world says, okay, and this is just the way that I am. I was born this way, therefore I'm just gonna embrace the way I feel. These are all strongholds. I know that things are very difficult in my marriage right now, but every marriage is difficult. These are just part of normal life. So we justify all of our dysfunctions in our marriage because it's just how everybody is. These are all strongholds. These are all false thoughts, guys. Here's another one. I, I want to be used by God, but I'm just not anointed, gifted, or talented enough. God will never be able to use somebody like me. I'm not attractive. I don't have abilities. These are strongholds. I'm, I'm not smart. I'm never going to succeed in school. I'm never going to get into that job or that market. I always flunk tests. I'm never going to pass. I'll never have a high paying job. And no matter what you do, you could be making $300,000 a year, y'all, and be poor and still be empty because there's strongholds of poverty, strongholds of lies. Bad things are always going to happen in my relationships. Here's one. I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to find anybody. All of my friends are getting married. Something. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. We got 3,300 yeah. of you listening right now. All my other friends are getting married, but I'll never get married. There is a stronghold in your life that God wants to break. Guys, I'm telling you tonight, there is a war going on for the real estate of your mind. Think of your mind and the battleground. The biggest battleground is right here between this ear and between that ear. The biggest battleground is not in some uh, third world country. It's about two and a half inches between your ears where the devil right now, and this is why we're on here we, serving him notice. 
is trying to wreak all out havoc in your life. The war is about property. It's about the enemy and God trying to occupy areas of your life. The Bible says in Romans 8, 5, those who are according to the flesh are controlled by the flesh's unholy desires. They set their minds. So here we go again, Jenny, mind on those Come things on. that gratify the flesh. But those who walk by the spirit are controlled by the, devir- the desires of the spirit. And they set their mind on things that gratify the spirit. So their minds, Romans 8, 5, wow. dictates their actions. A lot of these I'm reading in the Amplified dictate their actions. The Bible says this, so a man thinks, so he is. So this is why, guys, you see, why does it even matter we talk about strongholds? Because whatever happens in your mind dictates what you do. Every action, every repeated sin action comes out of an overflow of a stronghold. If you have a stronghold, and praise the Lord, you won't after tonight when we pray. It's only a matter of time before you act it out. I always say this, Jenny, whatever you do online, listen to me, guys, listen to me, ladies, whatever you do online, eventually will go offline. It's going to start with pornography. Then it's going to go into perversion. Then it's going to go into meeting up with people. Then it's going to go to doing this. And then it's going to go to cheating. Then it's going to go. I'm telling you, it progresses. God wants to heal your mind. I speak over you tonight. God wants to free your mind. God wants to deliver you in the mind. Let me just say one major stronghold. I only want to touch on one specific one, and that is what I believe the Lord specifically is putting his target on tonight, and that is the stronghold of depression. This is major. Depression and anxiety are becoming so common throughout the nation even now. Now, I want to read you a statistic. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, which I didn't know exists until I was preparing and studying, anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States. 40 million adults say they struggle with depression or anxiety. That's 18% of the U.S. population. At any point in time, 3 to 5% of people suffer from major depression. The lifetime risk of having depression in your lifetime is 17%. Anxiety disorders cost the United States, listen to this, Jenny, this is crazy, $42 billion a year in just anxiety disorders. That's what the U.S. pays. Almost one third of the country's mental health bill, which if you don't know, our country has a $150 billion mental health bill allocation for mental health. One third of that is for depression and anxiety. This is not just outside the church. You say, well, I'm I'm blood bought, I'm sanctified. Okay, me and Jenny travel all over the country. We've talked to thousands of people. And I'm telling you, if I said type one in the chat, if you're dealing with anxiety or depression, there would be over a thousand people guarantee it. That would just begin to spam one because it's happening in the church. Now, here's what the studies say. This is not Christian studies, by the way. It's just show you how sad it is that the world is broken. Studies say that a person who battles anxiety will also battle with depression or vice versa. So anyone that battles depression or anxiety will usually have these symptoms. So let me read some of these symptoms that you might have the stronghold. Remember, we're not talking about a demon of depression. That's completely different. But you might have the stronghold of depression. The demon of depression overwhelms you and dominates you. But you can get delivered from the spirit of depression and still have these symptoms because there's a stronghold that God needs to break. And we're going to go in here. We're going to tag team this in a minute. Very brief, very easy, very quick on how to break strongholds. We're going to give you five very simple steps. And I know, Jenny, it's later for you. But listen, we got 3,300 viewers on, guys. So we're just going to go for it here. And Jenny says she's good. Okay. So let me give you some signs you might have a stronghold of depression. Persistent and sad, empty mood. So you just feel empty for no reason. Grief, nonstop or abnormal crying, self-pity, shame, feelings of hopelessness or being pessimistic about everything, feelings of guilt, worthlessness or helplessness, a loss of interest and pleasures and hobbies that you once enjoyed, decreased energy. This is all depression, guys. Decreased energy, fatigue, feeling like you're being slowed down, difficulty concentrating, difficulty remembering or making decisions, insomnia, early morning waking up and can't going back to bed, oversleeping, appetite, weight loss, overeating, weight gain. These are all just crazy pendulum swings that are caused by a stronghold of depression. Now, remember, we've already done videos on the spirit of depression. This is a completely different thing. Restlessness, irritability, persistent physical symptoms that don't respond to treatment, such as headaches, digestive disorders, and chronic pain, tormenting thoughts, confusion, cutting or bringing physical harm to your body to distract yourself from emotional pain. I have met people that have gotten delivered, Jenny, from the spirit of depression, but they still deal with symptoms because there's a pattern of thinking that they need to break. Okay. So I want to give you guys quickly and then I'll give them. And then Jenny, I'll give you a chance to to just touch on these if you want as well. 
I want to give you guys five very basic, very easy ways because we're not on here just telling you Jenny talked about the spirit of rejection and then she gave you the way to break it. So we're not just giving, I, I hear Jenny, some people get on and teach and preach and they just tell what's wrong. You know, they go on about an hour right. about the spirit, but they, I'm like, the video's over. They never gave us, how do we overcome it? Right? My God. Like I talk about Jezebel. We talk about how you overcome her. When I preach on Leviathan, how do you overcome him? We're not just going to glorify the enemy by giving him and telling you guys all what he does, but we're also going to give you practical ways because everything we do spiritually we can also do practically every weapon that we have spiritually like praise like the power to bind and loose like coming agreement like using the, the sword of the spirit most people don't know how to use yes. the sword of the spirit we'll talk about this here in a minute but i'm gonna give you some practical ways so number one write this down is we destroy strongholds by assaulting them okay write that down by assaulting them with the word of god that is the number one way and here's where all of you are going to go oh man i haven't been reading my bible i don't pray i don't read the only way to undo wrong thinking i'm blessing myself tonight is to create right thinking and that's the only way to undo strongholds you cannot cast out a stronghold they must be broken by the word of god remember when jesus fought the devil he said it is written so we willed the sword of the spirit this is this is so good i'm blessing myself tonight we wield the sword of the spirit with our words that is how you use people think the sword of the spirit you just pick it up and swing it around in prayer no you use your words to wield it that's how you grip on the sword of spirit and in your words you break you shatter and you cut strongholds so i want to challenge you guys begin to memorize scripture so that when the enemy comes you can yes. defeat him fast the faster you defeat the enemy, the be easier the enemy is going to be to crush. If you let the enemy take an inch, you already know he's going to take a mile. So you need to defeat him fast. The way you defeat him fast is you capture the thoughts he gives you by using That's the so word funny. of God. Now, here's why I say you need to start memorizing verses. I preach with no notes. I preach 10 years with no notes. I preach uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Arizona for an hour, both times with no notes, preaching scriptures nonstop. How? memorizing them okay david said i've hidden your word in my heart so i don't sin against yes. you david didn't say i google your word on my iphone he said i've hidden my word now i don't i i google all the time i google stuff every time i'm preparing i'll google but here's the thing when it's two o'clock in the morning when it's one o'clock in the morning when it's four o'clock in the morning when you're being attacked when you're at work when persecution and trials anxiety attacks are coming on you you might not have time to google up a verse to fight the enemy so you need to have the word ready to be able to fight it so the word of god That's is how good. we assault strongholds romans 12 2 what does it say don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by so how do we do this by renewing your mind that you might prove what the will of god is which is good acceptable and perfect so strongholds are in the mind and we break them by renewing the mind what does it mean to be transformed it means be changed into the likeness of christ that where does this take place it doesn't take place in our physical appearance when god says i want to transform you in the likeness of christ he's not trying to make you look like a jewish man named jesus it's not what he's doing in the spirit realm he wants yes. you to look like spiritually jesus he's trying to make us by changing our inner character be more like christ how does it happen it happens by renewing the mind changing the way we think he makes us think the way he thinks oh this is so good tonight by the word of god the word of god makes us think like god because we can't know what god thinks unless we know his word so in the bible we have god's way of thinking that's what the bible is so if you want to know how god thinks about something read the bible if you want to know what god thinks about money it's in the bible if you want to know what does god think about adultery theft cheating jealousy selfishness unselfishness humility pride anything is in the bible the answer is there when jesus came to earth the bible called him the word of god we are told that the word became flesh this yes. means that if you want to know what god thinks about anything or about any subject look to jesus jesus is the walking word the bible says the word became flesh god wants your life to be manifested and to look like jesus let me give you one last one but this is the way we assault him second corinthians 3 2. you are paul says our letter written in our hearts recognized and read by everybody so paul says your letter recognized and read by yeah. everyone not just your neighbor not your wife not your kids but everyone's reading you you show that you are a letter from christ delivered by us written not with ink so here we know paul's not talking natural but with the spirit of the living god not on tablets of stone but on the human heart paul says that you are a letter you are a walking word you are a walking epistle one translation says we're written epistles read by every man so you are read by every man 
and God's not using ink to write on you. He's using his spirit. And so I'm telling you guys, using the word of God, I don't know if you want to jump in at all with the word of God, Jenny, but using the word of God is a major way that I found in my personal life, Jenny, to assault the kingdom of darkness, yeah. to break the kingdom of darkness, and to see God break strongholds in my life. You know, there's been strongholds yes. in my own life of anxiety of stress that I've dealt with. I'm sure you have too, getting on stage, having to have a word all the time, having to be. And then God says, Isaiah, I'm going to use my word. He gives perfect peace whose mind is set on him. I use that scripture anytime I get anxiety to break. So nothing gets built because remember, okay. strongholds get built thought by thought, brick by brick. So in, what will happen is, if I give into the anxiety, Jenny, if I give into the stress, if I give into the worry, oh man, tomorrow I have to do this. And you know, Jenny, as I know, if you're an influencer, if you're a preacher, if you're a worship leader, if you have a business like we do, you there's never a time where you have any time off. There's never, every single moment in the day, there's something that needs to get done. So you have to intentionally yes. take time off or else you'll just be working night and day. So how do we combat the stress? How do we combat the anxiety? When the thought comes, oh, I'm so stressed. I have to get this done tomorrow. Oh, I'm so stressed. I'm helping someone in the chat tonight. Yeah. Oh, I have to get this done. I'm having anxiety attack. I have to get this. The moment that brick gets laid, what happens? I use the word of God to get that brick out of here. Get that thought out of here. I arrest the thought. I take it captive and I'm able to prevent the stronghold before it's built, be able to prevent it from being built. That's so good. And I absolutely agree with that. I love how the scripture says that we pull these strongholds mm. down and then we take these thoughts captive. And I've been held captive. I've literally been arrested. I have been put in a prison, like for real, by real actual police. So I know what it's like to be held captive. And so I always tell my students, I say, when you have a thought, I'm not good enough. Oh, I just want to die. I just want to, you know, go away. I want to cheat. I want to do this. You have to actually take that thought, Come on. pull it down and put it somewhere. You don't just let these thoughts wow. take you on a rabbit trail of just whatever the thought that you're just running after these thoughts. You're sitting there tormented, staring out the window, daydreaming, all this stuff is happening. Your thoughts are, are running the show. And so the Bible says, pull them down and actually make them be obedient wow. to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, where you can actually say to that thought, oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I just heard that you just said that I'm not worthy. That's not true. That's that's not accurate. I'm taking that thought. I'm pulling you down now. And then don't just pull it down. You have to, to actually replace it with the knowledge of God because these thoughts mm. are going against the knowledge of God. And so what's in that place? We put the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? What God says about you. Even Jesus fought the devil with the knowledge of God. That's why when Isaiah is saying, get, know the word, you have to use the word. And funny enough, the devil was actually using the word mm. against Jesus. But here's the thing. He was twisting the word. So trust me, everybody on here, you got to know the word for real. And so you take that thought and you go, no, God says that I am. I have been predestined in love to be adopted unto sonship. God loves me so much that he gave his son that to die for me. And God says, I'm beloved. He says, I'm more than a conqueror. He says, I'm the head. I'm not the tail. He says, I'm above. I'm not beneath. And you literally have to use one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is self-discipline. Not Holy Ghost going to come and discipline come you and say, ah. Now, 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 go back over here. Do, no, no, no. Self-discipline. That's a fruit of the Holy Ghost where you go, God's already given me the power and authority to tread upon serpents. He's given me the authority. Pull this thought down. These thoughts can no longer run your life. You've been given the tools. It's not Sister Sally over there. I got to go tell her a piece of my mind. She's not. No, 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 no. The war is not in the spiritual realm. It's not flesh against flesh. It's not brother against sister. It's not who was doing that. Who, this person did that. They called you. No, your fight is in the spiritual realm. So you take that thought, pull it down. That you better be obedient to Christ. Jesus is Lord here. My thought sound. I have the mind of Christ. And so those scriptures just pull out those scriptures. If you have to take a card, a physical card, a piece of paper and write down scriptures, Come on. write them down. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Uh, God has not given me the spirit of fear. You have to fold that up every single day that you go to work and keep it in your pocket. It's not stupid. It's incredible. Because
because these are your weapons. You pull out the sword. You go, okay, devil, you want to see here? And come you tell on, me that I'm come gonna be broke, on. And that our house is going to be taken and that I'm going to stay sick and the doctor report's going to come back and say I got cancer again. Let me tell you what God says. God says that by his stripes, I'm healed. That's what I'm believing. I'm pulling that thought down and I'm replacing it with the word of God. And you cannot go against the word of God. You literally have to act like you're in a, a real boot camp Come and on. start training yourself to be equipped with the word of God. So every day you wake up, the devil is actually going to start being scared. He's like, oh no, they're really actually starting to know the word. They're actually picking up all these weapons that have been sitting around them, all over them. They're actually starting to see these weapons. Now, I'm terrified. This is what the devils are going to start saying. Now, we're scared. We know that our time has come. Our time is up. And they start seeing you as a threat rather than a pawn in their little game. Ooh, come on, somebody. Somebody tweet that. They say you as a threat and not a pawn. I like that. I love come it. On. All right. And then, Jenny, if you want to jump in any moment, just interrupt me and feel free. I'm going to go. I'm just going to roll with it here, and then we're going to pray over you guys. So stay with us because we're going to pray prayers of breakthrough. But I want to give you a couple more of these really basic steps. So good, Jenny. I'm just, I'm, I'm, fire, I'm so fired up. I'm about to jump out of my <laughs> office desk here. Okay, number two to breaking strongholds is confessing our sin to God and others. And by the way, guys, I did not get these from a book. I didn't, I got these directly from the Holy ghost. This is a strategy God has been giving me and I've been putting it down and praying about it. So number two is confessing our sin to God and to others. I'm going to tell you why I say others here in a minute. First John one, nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness, the condition to be forgiven. So what condition do I have to have? for God to forgive me. This is the only condition, write this down, to be forgiven, and that's to confess your sin, to admit that it's wrong, to admit you need forgiveness, yeah. and then decide that you won't continue in that sin. Now, why wouldn't we just confess our sin? This is why, pride. Now, some of you are saying, well, everyone could confess, it's easy. No, 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 there's a lot of you in the chat that will not confess your sin because of pride. People do not think, you cannot confess something you don't think is a sin. Come on, help me preach. People do so not good. think that they are wrong. People are not willing to come to grips with the fact that they are in sin. And so what happens is we have tons of sin in our life. We go to church on Sunday, we never get convicted, we never think we're wrong, and pride says, you're fine where you're at, there's no sin in your life. Isaiah and Jenny are preaching to your neighbor, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle. This sermon is not for you. This message is not for you. You don't need deliverance. You don't need breakthrough. You've been raised in church. There's a name in the brick in the foundation of the building. You have flowers you planted out front. And surely you don't need to confess anything. You're fine where you're at. And the devil keeps strongholds. He keeps you in bondage. But the Bible says to confess your sin. Understand yeah. that most people could instantly be forgiven if they realize their true state. The American cupcake gospel. Let me say that again because you guys thought I stuttered. The American cupcake gospel gospel does not show you your true state of sin and depravity the holy spirit wants to bring this illumination want, as my light just goes crazy bright as i say illumination okay hopefully it adjusts here he wants to bring illumination in your life he wants to bring breakthrough in your life he wants to bring deliverance in your life but you need to learn to admit when you're wrong you need to admit when something is wrong in your life so that god can forgive you now i want to say this jenny and then i'll fix my light here in a minute confession is not the same as admission Okay. Admission saying, God, I'm sorry, which yes. is what a lot of us do is not the same as confession. Now the original word that is going to help you confess or confession means this, and this is going to sound weird, but I'm going to explain it to say the same thing or to agree on something. Okay. That's what confession mm -hmm. means. It literally just means I agree with you. I'm confessing. I agree with you. I agree with the same thing. So this means confession is me agreeing with God and saying, Oh, I feel the Holy ghost and That's saying good. the same thing that God says about something. So whatever God has to say about it, that's what I have to say about it. So when God sees my sin and my uh, compromise, that's the way I see my sin and compromise. So when God says pornography is wrong, I say pornography is wrong. When God says anger is wrong, I say anger is wrong. When God says that that movie, I see the movie, this is confession, the way God sees the movie. I see the music the way wow. God sees the, mu the music. I see that relationship. Well, you say, well, it's not that bad. It's not that big a deal. But God says it is a big deal. It is bad. It's abusive. It's sexual. It's taking you down the wrong road. So when I confess my sin, now I say, I agree. 
I believe the same thing you say. Now, admitting is just saying, Lord, my relationship's wrong, and then going and sleeping with the guy again or the girl again, okay? That's admitting right. something. Confessing something is saying, Lord, I see my life the way you see it. And Jenny, I'll never forget January 12th, 2011, and I saw my sin for what it was, and I broke down in tears for the first time. I never cried in 10 years, and I cried as I realized my cursing, my addiction, my pornography, my shame, my guilt, my abuse. I saw it the way God saw it, and that was proof that I truly confessed. And so in that confession, you see the God, things the way God sees it. That's how you break strongholds. Okay, let me give you one more here, is to confess to other people. Now, I'm going to tell you why we need to do this. First of all, let me give you a verse because y'all don't believe me here. You're like, Isaiah, are you Catholic? No, listen, James 5, 16, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray yeah. for each other so you could be healed. The prayer yeah. of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Why would I ever tell somebody else about my sin? Why do I need to tell anybody? Why do I need to go and share with my pastor or with my leader? Hey, I'm struggling with lust. What's the purpose? They can't forgive me, although that's not scriptural, but that you say they can't forgive me, only God can forgive me. Here's why. The devil can only build in the dark. He's like those yeah. construction companies. They can only work on freeways at night. They're not allowed to build on freeways in the day because the freeway has too many people on them, so they have to wait till nighttime. The devil can only build in the dark. So when you confess to somebody else, what happens? You're turning the light on, you're exposing the sin, and the devil is losing his ability to be able to continue to build that specific stronghold in your life. So it is in confession, that you're able to break the stronghold. You know, many times, Jenny, if I have a wrong pattern of thinking or something in my life, I just say, Lord, I confess it. Anxiety, for instance. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say something very controversial, but I believe it's biblical. Stress and anxiety, which are two things that I've battled and I've fought and I've overcome, are sins. Okay, they're not. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a sin to worry because the Bible says, be anxious yeah. about yeah. nothing. Pray about everything. Jesus says, do not be afraid. So if Jesus says, do not be anxious, and I am anxious, that's going against what God says to do. So in turn, anxiety is sin. So that I have that's to renounce that. Bad. Jenny, I have to confess that. When I'm always confessing sin all the time. Lord, I confess this. I'm sorry for being anxious. Why am I anxious? I'm anxious because yeah. I don't believe God's going to show up when God says he'll show up. I'm anxious because I don't believe God's going to do what God says he's going to do. And so I have to renounce that and say, Lord, I confess it. I renounce it. I'm not admitting it because God already knows I'm dealing with it. So what's the point of saying, God, here's what I'm dealing with. He already knows. But when I confess it, I say this, I'm anxious. And I see anxiety the way you see anxiety. And anxiety is my lack of trust in you. And so now I'm seeing it the way you see it. I don't know if you want to touch on the confessing at all or anything like that. But, you know, this is something that's no, been powerful right. in my life is just bringing that confession before the Lord. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It reminds me of the story of the man that actually confessed his unbelief to, to the Lord. Come on. He said, I'm dealing with unbelief. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He said, help my unbelief. Yeah, I believe, but. He was saying, but there's a little bit that's here, a little bit of worry, a little bit of anxiety, and there's something that is just not connecting. And it's so amazing that Jesus actually did the deliverance and healed after that, after that confession of the man saying, okay, I do have this, and Lord, I'm asking your help with this. So absolutely, it's, it's so important. The enemy loves to keep us hidden and keep us in the cave and keep us isolated and keep us thinking, oh, you're a Christian. So if you admit that, this one used to tell Come me, on. I'd say, I don't know if you've ever, ever gone through this. If you if you admit that you're going through anything, how are you ever going to be able to minister to people? Come on. How are people going to trust you as a leader? That is what so many pastors and leaders are going through. That's why they can't ever get free. They can't say, I need a sabbatical right now. I've got to go get healed. And these thoughts, because there's this whole thing that the enemy tries to, to build up in your mind that, well, don't don't confess it because then how are the people going to see you and that right there is a whole stronghold so absolutely we need to confess come on i'm going to give you guys real i'm going to speed through these and then i want to get into prayer here because i believe the holy spirit wants to begin to move in deliverance and breakthrough and healing yeah. um there's still 300 3300 of you on we're amazed guys we're honored by this me Thank and i could speak on behalf of jenny we're not these arrogant people like oh we expect all these people to be here every time i see those numbers go up jenny i'm humbled by it i'm honored by it i see the desperation the people i don't take you guys yes. being here lightly your time is the most valuable resource and so i don't want to take your time lightly guys but i want to give you just a couple more to breaking strongholds number three i I want to give you this one is spending time with the holy spirit i know these are going to be yeah, easy these yes. are going to be quick those first two are longer spending time here's the bottom line reality write this down you become who you become like who you spend time with when you spend time yeah. with him he goes in and destroys the strongholds in your life the less time you spend with him 
the more you'll be like other people around you. So whoever you spend the most time with is who you become. If you want to see your future, look at the people you're hanging around. That will be your future. So as you spend time in prayer, you'll begin to take on the mind of Christ without even realizing it. The only way to know his mind is to hear his voice. This happens when you yeah. spend time. This happens in prayer. Those old patterns of thinking get replaced by God's patterns of thinking. Okay, next one. Number okay. four is by fasting. In Matthew chapter six, Jesus names three things that believers should do. He says, when you pray, that's Matthew 6, 2. When you give, that's Matthew 6, 5. And when you fast, that's Matthew 6, 16. So Jesus yeah. doesn't say if you pray, if you give and if you fast. He says when you do. So this is Jesus' calling for every believer to pray, to give, which we won't go and do because you all start manifesting, and to fast. <laughs> Fasting brings many spiritual benefits. It's an act of setting ourselves aside for the work of the Lord. It teaches us yeah. to deny our flesh so we can receive more from God. It empowers our prayer. It increases our spiritual discernment. It positions us to hear the voice of God. It positions us to hear the heart of God and to see God's timing more clearly. It's this process of denying the flesh and it brings us into a greater level of humility. It increases our faith and a lot of other things Fasting is powerful. You need to fast. Okay, let me give you the last one that I have for tonight. I don't know what is going on with my lights. They've never done this. They're going, I said illuminate and my lights just went crazy bright over I here. I'm sweating that. now. But these are the things. Okay, let me give you guys one last one. This one's often overlooked. People don't think about this, but this to me is the most, um, like the most, I guess you'd say one that relates to strongholds the most, right? And this is to spend your time, write this down guys, thinking about good things. So the Bible says yes. in Philippians 4, 8, finally brothers. So he's at the end. He says, okay, I want to tell you one last thing. Finally, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there's any virtue, if there's any praise, think on these things. So what are we thinking about? I want you guys to ask yourself in the chat, what have I been thinking about? Have I been thinking about lust? Have I been thinking about anger? Have I been thinking about losing my job? Have I been thinking about what is my husband going to do? And is he going to cheat on me? Is my wife going to leave me again? Are my kids going to be the, the the Bible says we need to think on good things. Now the Greek word think means to be concentrated or put a focus effort somewhere. So Paul is saying this, it's not going to happen by you sitting around on Netflix all day. Y'all, this is intentional. Fix your yeah. mind on the things that reflect and reveal the nature of God. Do not let your mind wander. So we need to fix our mind on things on heaven. We need to fix our mind on things of God. We need to think good thoughts. The Bible says think heavenly thoughts. Don't think on things below. Think on things above. And these are the five quick ways I wanted to give you that God has been giving me this last week on breaking strongholds. I believe if you apply what Jenny taught you on rejection and the prayer and you broke and you apply these things, God will set you free. We're going to just go ahead and tag team praying for you guys here. I know, Jenny, thank you so much. I know it's late where you're at. I really do appreciate you. I know you have a husband, you have a, a daughter. And so I really honor, I respect your time. As I said, guys, please make sure before you get off, we're going to pray for you guys. So this is the most important part, but I want to say yeah. before you get off tonight, guys, I want to make sure that you grab something off Jenny's merch shop. I'm going to grab something. I'm wearing one of her shirts right now. Yahweh, as you can see, I love this shirt. I wear it all the time. This is my third broadcast wearing it. <laughs> so guys, make sure you grab something. But here's what I want to do. I want to pray, Jenny, and then I'll turn it over to you. And I just want to flow. I just want to pray for yeah. breaking of strongholds, breaking thought patterns, breaking spirits, breaking rejection, and then we can just pray healing and we can just, you know, pray prophetically over them. So Father, we just ask okay. you right now, Holy Spirit, for your anointing and your power just to begin to flow. I speak over every single one of you watching in your car, in your kitchen, in your living room, in your home. I speak the power and the anointing of Almighty God to begin to flow in your house right now. I pray revival begins to break out wherever you are. I pray the healing anointing, the deliverance anointing. I pray right now gifts of the Holy Spirit. I speak to someone right now that's been dealing with the stronghold of depression and I command those strongholds to be broken in Jesus name. We command the strongholds of depression, of anger, of addiction, of anxiety, of fear right now, of racism, of bitterness, of bad theology. We break them in Jesus name. We speak to your mind and we say, be free. 
in Jesus name we say take on the mind of Christ in Jesus name be renewed some of you I hear the Lord saying are having tormenting thoughts you're having thoughts of death and the Lord says tonight I'm breaking every tormenting thought in Jesus name I say to you Satan no more tormenting the people of God I want some of you right now to say that this mind is not a mind for the enemy this mind is not property I revoke every permit that I've given darkness I revoke every license I've given the enemy to build in my mind Satan you cannot build in my mind Satan I rebuke you come on pray this guys I rebuke you Satan in Jesus name come out of my mind come out of my soul leave me now every brick even those little strongholds that just started being built we demolish them in Jesus name we pull them down in Jesus name we yes. remove them in Jesus name father I pray that you would give us a Holy Spirit addiction in Jesus name give us an addiction to your presence given give us an addiction to your word release your power in Jesus name release your anointing in Jesus name heal our minds Jeez. let our minds be renewed and just begin to break these things right now in Jesus name thank you Lord go for it Jenny I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch my light really quick here you're fine thank you God Lord we just thank you father that you are setting the captives free in the name of Jesus I break and bind every mind binding Spirit, every spirit of confusion, every spirit of depression and suicide, every spirit of murder. In the name of Jesus, we break your power right now. Some of you need to renounce any uh, ties to the occult, any ties to witchcraft. Come on. We renounce these things right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Ghost, that it's by your power and your power alone that the captives are set free. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that every stronghold is being pulled down. Every stronghold, even from childhood, even from years back, Come on. has been built up and built up and built up. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we march around the walls and the walls come down. We shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We thank you, God, for the tools that you've given us. We thank you for the spirit of wisdom revelation father that we would know you the revelation of who you are flood us god with who you are flood us god with your word right now dismantle every lie from the enemy god break every stronghold down in the name of jesus i hear the lord saying some of you have dealt with a stronghold in your mind that you cannot be delivered come on you have that's good had this stronghold and it actually comes from um teaching and uh, bad doctrine unsound doctrine and it has literally built a stronghold in your mind where you think you can't be set free and in the name of jesus the light of christ exposes that darkness right now that stronghold we command it to come down in the name of jesus there's a stronghold in someone's life that says that god put sickness on you that you cannot be healed from this come that, on that sickness is actually supposed to be in your life that God has actually put it on you and that is a stronghold that keeps you from being healed in the name of Jesus we call that stronghold come down now in Jesus name some of you literally feel pain that's been all in your back I sense the fire of God right now healing that area everything that's been hidden everything that creeps everything that's been crawling every monitoring and watching spirit in the name of jesus we break your power now we say loose god's people they are not yours you are illegal now in the name of jesus they confess jesus they have forgiven people they renounce every tie to the, the devil and satan and in the name of jesus we say go now you cannot stay you cannot stay in their memory you cannot stay in their dream room you cannot stay in the household you cannot live in their children's room you cannot be in the marriage in the name of jesus so we say now be set free whom the sun sets free is free indeed in jesus mighty name come on and guys if we call you out or say something that you feel like is you just type one in the chat so we know because i'm looking at the chat here i can see both youtube and facebook but one of the things i feel like the lord is healing right now is i see the lord saying i'm healing nerve damage i specifically yeah. see in your right hip i know it sounds kind of weird but it goes down your right hip maybe even down your leg there's a nerve damage that was somehow i don't know if you got surgery i'm seeing like a surgery or a hip replacement and somehow they damage 
damaged a nerve and the doctors say your nerve is damaged you're never going to be healed it's just going to have constant it's like a burning pain you're getting on the right side of your hip lower right side of your back slash hip i hear the lord saying right now i'm healing nerve damage another thing i heard the lord say is i'm going to heal childhood trauma those that were sexually yeah. abused i don't want to be too graphic i know there's a lot of kids watching but god says right now i'm healing childhood trauma now here's what i want to say jenny this is a very specific word this is not f emotional healing okay god is showing me that he's going to heal your physical body from childhood wow. trauma you are unable wow. to have children because trauma you went through from a family member and god's giving me this very specific word and tonight Jesus. god says i'm going in and i'm healing your womb Ooh. i'm healing your female reproductive organs i'm healing body parts that were damaged as a child that did not develop properly because of trauma and because of abuse but god says i'm going to heal you in jesus name i'm going to restore you in jesus name here's another thing i heard the lord saying left ear ringing you've been getting a really bad ring in your left ear it's not all the time and guys i want to be as specific as possible but it's not all the time but you're just randomly getting it it's just dehabilitating you get migraines from it you get headaches from it you just feel weary you feel tired that left ear ringing it's not your right ear your left ear and you even went to the doctor and this is somebody that went to the doctor the doctors don't know what it is there's nothing wrong with your ears but the lord says this is demonic it's an assignment of sickness and tonight i break it now i command that person that left ear ringing i see you i believe it's right there michelle I command that left ear to be healed in Jesus name Robo Sandia Rabasha we speak healing in Jesus name over the ear over the ear we command you to be healed and be restored in Jesus name I'm also seeing right now there's somebody that has been getting a rash on your I guess is your right side for you it's left on the screen but it's backwards but it's your right side you're getting a rash on your neck and it's going down your right shoulder there's a rash there a skin rash it's burning it's itching and you even thought this last week you said maybe it's um what is that word called shingles you said maybe it's shingles but it's not shingles but the Lord says I'm healing you right now if you have a rash right there I want you to type one lay your hands there because right now the Lord is releasing healing power in Jesus name okay I see you right there put your hand on that rash because God's going to bring healing over rash over skin disease i hear the lord saying i'm even healing blood diseases tonight in jesus name those of you that have blood diseases those of you who have that rare blood type you get sick all the time your immune system's been low god says i'm bringing healing and guys i also tonight this is not a word of knowledge this is a general word i will come against covid in jesus name we cancel out the assignment of covid 19 in jesus yes. name i've gotten hundreds of messages of people that have had covid that are having it now even some of you tonight say you're watching the hospital we come against you covid now you lying spirit jesus. i come against that sickness i bind if it's a demon there we bind it if it's a natural sickness we command healing to come in jesus name every symptom now of your lungs there's people watching now that i know personally that say I can't I haven't got my taste back I haven't got my smell back we command in Jesus name, in name your taste Jesus. to come back your smell to come back your Ooh. lungs to be restored we speak to your lungs in Jesus name and we say be healed be healed and be restored in the name of Jesus I come against food allergies those that are yes. lactose intolerant those that you can't have milk you can't have dairy you can't have cheese I right now speak the healing power God says I'm healing allergies I'm healing those that are locked lactose intolerant in Jesus name I'm bringing my healing wave Lord we ask you the Bible says the disciples stretched out their hands and there was healing power released and we know that our God is not bound in time or space we know Jesus healed people that were not even there in the physical so right now we speak healing through this broadcast we say be healed we say be restored in Jesus name we just release the power of God right now. Thank you, Lord. Robo Sam yes. And Isaiah, yes. I heard the Lord say that He's healing someone's eye. And so I believe that you've had you almost think that you're um going blind in that eye. There's Come on. been so much cloudiness. There's all these little floaty things. There's just been so much irritation with your eye. And God's healing that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone's had trouble being able to move your leg. There's severe swelling from your ankles all the way up to your calf area. If you look at your leg, it just looks like it's so like like been beat up. It's bruised, but you haven't really had any um like fall or anything happen. It's literally from swelling. And in the name of Jesus, that swelling goes down. You'll be able to stand up. You'll be able to walk in the name of Jesus. You're going to run and not grow weary in the name of Jesus. Someone's dealing with severe back pain. It's like your back is on fire. You know what? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare this over my husband right now. Come on. Room. I, I know you're watching. In the name of Jesus, I, I'm claiming this for Come our on. family. If you've been dealing with pain in your back, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that you're being healed. God's literally pulling out that pain. That pain is dissipating. It's gone. In
in Jesus' name. Get up from your seat. Get up from your bed. Literally stretch out something that you could not do. If you couldn't move your arm all the way up, there were there was so much pain. Move, do it, and do it in faith. I'm telling you what I know. God is doing this because it is a sign, and there are unbelievers on here. Actually, Isaiah, I hear the Lord Come say, on. there'll be so many unbelievers that will watch the, yes. the replay. And, and you're watching this. You actually watched it all the way up into this point, and you couldn't really turn it off. And you're seeing in the comments, wow, that person said that was them. Wow, they just got healed. God's calling you back, my friend. That's why you're here. It's God's power that you're here because I, they love you so much. I hear the Lord so saying there's somebody the la saying. somebody last week. It only could be last mm -hmm. week because I'm getting this very specific. Please type one if this is you. You got rear-ended last week. You were sitting at a red light. I, I literally just saw this in the spirit. And you guys know me. If I'm flowing, I'm flowing. I'm not going to get on here and do this if it's not real. But I, I saw last week you're sitting at a red light. You got rear-ended. And right before you said lower back pain, I kept hearing the Lord say your lower back, it feels out of place because of you Ooh. getting rear-ended. Type one, because right now, you know you're That's already crying because you know this is you. The Lord says, I'm healing, I'm restoring, I'm renewing. And then I heard the Lord say, there's somebody that's on, they need, they said, the doctor said they need a kidney transplant. And God says, tonight, I'm giving you a kidney transplant. You're on the list or whatever Ooh. you're on, but God says your kidneys are not functioning properly. So right now, lay your hands because God is restoring your kidney. God is renewing your kidney. God is bringing restoration and healing. Guys, I'm telling you, creative miracles are real. Okay, I see you right there in the chat. Creative miracles are real. And guys, I'm looking at both platforms. So I see both of you there. Creative miracles are real and God can give you a brand new kidney in Jesus name. We speak over you now. There's somebody in here that you were addicted to alcohol for 30 plus years. And the Lord is saying, I'm bringing healing, right, healing over your liver. You were an alcoholic. And I, I even hear the Lord saying, Jenny, that they said, I deserve this. I was an alcoholic for 30 years. God broke my addiction, but I'm always going to have liver problems, liver damage. But God says, I'm bringing healing. Not only am I restoring your spirit not only am i breaking worry and anxiety off you but the lord says i'm also restoring livers right now those of you that have been dealing with intense constipation they don't know why doctors can't explain it god says i'm bringing healing over your digestive tract in jesus name there's a healing there's a restoration in jesus name Ooh. god is restoring that digestive tract in jesus name i also see somebody and this is going to sound weird and this actually happened to me well, I didn't fully break, but I cracked. I see somebody right now. I just got, I just see this in the spirit. There's somebody in here that had a broken rib from a trampoline accident. And I don't think you're a kid wow. either. I think you're in your twenties and I don't know if you're doing a front flip, back flip, but I actually cracked a rib as a kid, but I saw you, I just saw somebody doing, I think a back flip and you landed and cracked your rib or broke your rib. And you've been having rib pain when you breathe. Okay. I see you right here in the chat. You have rib pain, but the Lord says, I'm healing your rib right now. You know who you are. I'm okay. I see you. I'm bringing bringing healing over your rib in Jesus name. God is restoring, God is renewing and God is bringing his healing power. Guys, if you're new to me like this is crazy, this isn't real. This is the word of knowledge. This is the gift everyone can activate in this. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. As I taught you guys, these gifts are like a tool shed. You go in and get the gift and you're able to pull it out. The Bible says it's subject. The gifts are subject to the person. The spirit of prophecy is subject to the prophet. That's why the Bible says we can take turns. So you say, well, how can you just start doing it? It's by faith. We give words of knowledge yes. by faith. We give words of prophecy by faith. We see in the spirit by faith. And so right now, I also see the Lord healing somebody's parents that they just found out they got COVID you're panicking but here's what the Lord's word is to you and I believe that I know it's gonna sound well it's not gonna sound weird because it's a word of knowledge but you're 19 years old you just found out your parents have COVID and the Lord says do not worry do not stress wow. for I am this is the word for you for I am the Lord that heals you're 19 I want you to type one in the chat if this is you and your parents I believe it's both your parents just got diagnosed with COVID and you're panicking, but the Lord says, do not panic. They will recover, says the Lord. And so we speak over them right now, be healed. We speak over them right now, be restored in Jesus name. We break COVID off them now. We speak restoration power in Jesus name, renewing power. I'm telling you guys, there's healing happening right now. If you yes. need a healing, this is your night to be healed. This is your night to be restored. Okay, I see you right there. This is your night for break through in Jesus name. God wants to bring breakthrough. God wants to bring healing over you in Jesus name. We thank you, Lord. Go for it. Someone said they were healed in their eye. Come on. That pain that was in their eye. This lady is testifying. She was the one that was rear ended. Come on. Um, last week. She's saying God is so faithful. Um, she's saying no pain, but there's only tightness on the left side. 
Um, so we just pray right now, all of it go now in the name of Jesus. Listen, sis, Beth, God reveals so Come that on. he can heal. He doesn't just reveal so that we can say, wow, look, we're moving in this gift. Not at all. This is to show that God thinks about you. He, he's, he's mindful of you. He will heal you and is doing it now in the name of Jesus. All tightness go in the name of Jesus. We curse every sickness, every pain, every bit of infirmity, every disease. In the name of Jesus, we command you to bow to the name of Jesus. Guys, if you need healing, you need to go ahead and just jump on into Come this on. river. God is moving so strong. I'm, I'm like moved to tears because I feel the Lord moving so strong. And it's just because he's so good. He's so, so good. And some of those strongholds have come down during the break, during the broadcast. And it's literally ushered in just healing. Now you're able to be healed. You're able to be set free. God doesn't want to do it just a partial thing. He wants to do the whole thing. He wants to heal you from the top of your head come and the soles of your feet. So receive your healing now. Um, I'm hearing this. Some people have had strongholds in their mind, Isaiah, that they cannot pray in their heavenly language, that Come they on. cannot move in the gift of word of knowledge. And even watching the broadcast, they are looking and they're going, wow, it would be so nice, but I can't do that. I don't have that. That was for them and it's not for me. In the name of Jesus, we pull that stronghold down. You need to say, I pull that stronghold down Come in on. the name of Jesus and I will move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit as the the Holy Ghost gives them to me. And here's the thing, your prayer language, you, you, it's, it's free. It's there. You can just pray in the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost gives it. It's a free gift. So in the name of Jesus, be filled now, receive the Holy Ghost, receive your prayer language. Don't pray in English. Don't say hallelujah. None of that. Just begin to open up your mouth, step out in faith and the Holy Ghost will fill your mouth. The Holy Ghost will give you the utterance. It's how and then when you get your prayer language, testify in the comments. If you're not on the floor, if you can type, testify in the comments, say, I got it. God's giving it to me. I got him. I got my language tonight in Jesus' name. So I saw another thing, Jenny, while you were praying, is I saw somebody getting a tattoo and then it getting infected. And when I say I see it, wow. guys, I'm talking about... I don't know, I see words in the spirit and then I see images and so I'm telling you guys what I'm seeing. But I want you to type one. So far I've seen all the ones that we've called out. I want you to type one. I'm seeing both Facebook and YouTube on one screen here. You got a tattoo. I don't know if it was recent or not, but I see a skin was infected. And I know it sounds gross, but it's like, okay, I see you right there. There's two people right there right away. But it's pussing wow. out and God says, I'm healing your skin right now. I'm healing your skin right now. I'm restoring your skin in Jesus' name. We command that infection to go now in Jesus' name. We just say be healed healed we say be restored we say be renewed in jesus name i also see the lord say i'm healing someone from a boating accident i don't know for sure but i believe it was wow. wakeboarding but it could be it could be a different water sport but you're in a boating accident and you pulled out i think it was your right shoulder i'm hearing the lord say your right shoulder so something happened to your shoulder in a boating accident bible says we prophesy in part so some of this stuff i'm just i'm hearing but i hear your right shoulder you popped it out or you pulled it out and then what happened was you got it back in place, but now it pops out every so often. It pops out randomly. And so the Lord wow. says, if you were, the, if that's you in that boating accident, I think you were wakeboarding and your shoulder came out of place, your right shoulder. God says, I'm going to bring healing right now to your right shoulder, your shoulder blade, Woo! the dislocations being healed. I speak it over you now in Jesus name. I just keep seeing accidents. God says, if you've been in an accident, you need healing. There's healing for trauma right now. There's healing for accidents right now. Digestive tracts are being healed. Blood disease are being healed. The God that heals for one. Okay. I see you right there. The God that heals for one the bible says will he not do it for another so god wants to heal you i see lots of car accidents god wants to restore you and then jesus. tonight i want to say this jenny we put cancer on notice in jesus yeah. name cancer you are broken a lot of people in the chat saying cancer you are broken in jesus name hair loss i see that we break you now in jesus Whatever. name and we command healing to be released in the name of jesus we command restorations now over your over your skin i see you right there christina we say over your skin be healed be restored and be renewed in jesus name we speak the healing power of god we thank you lord for your healing anointing we thank you for your healing power in jesus name we say say be healing someone said i was about to get off i'm at the emergency room right now they're running tests but never find anything i believe it's spiritual i speak manual over you you're in the emergency wow. room watching this i say be healed in jesus name manual jesus. your body be restored in the name of jesus we speak oh the healing power of almighty god over you manual and we say that there will be nothing every symptom will leave in jesus name be healed be restored high blood pressure. Be restored those of you with diabetes. 
We just command right now healing yes. to happen right now. We command healing. STDs, we command to be healed. AIDS, I've seen multiple people, doctors report, we're not blowing smoke, doctors report healed of AIDS. And so we just say AIDS, be healed in Jesus' name. We thank you for that anointing. Thank you, Lord, that you're baptizing the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you're bringing deliverance. Thank you that you're bringing healing, those that are speaking in tongues. I'm so glad you said that, Jenny. That stronghold that's been preventing you is being broken now in Jesus' name. Sinus infections, I see you right there, Nina, are being broken in Jesus' name. Thyroids are being healed. Throat cancers are being healed. Blood cancers are being healed. In the name of Jesus, we just command. I just say over you, Susanna, your lungs, she says, can't feel, I can't breathe. Susanna, be healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Receive your healing. Lay hands on yourself. Guys, if we're praying over you and calling out words of knowledge, lay hands on that part of your body. Activate your miracle. It's it's uh, it's a it's an act of faith, the Bible calls it. So go ahead and activate that because God is releasing healing over you right now in Jesus' name. Lots of people, Jenny, are saying they have COVID. I see someone say, I just got diagnosed with COVID. My wow. lungs are hurting. But right now, we just speak. COVID is broken, and Lord, just release your healing wave over COVID right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Thank Jesus. You, Lord. In the name of Jesus. May the breath of God fill your lungs in the name of Jesus. We prophesy that you shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we command every dry bone come alive right now. In yes. Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that you're turning it around. Even in the midnight hour, there's a turnaround coming. There's a turnaround coming, sis. There's a turnaround coming, brother. There's a turnaround coming. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you are the God of miracles. And they won't just stop during the live. These miracles are going to continue to go on and on and on and on. And Isaiah, you'll be the one getting the notifications. <laughs> this is on your page. You will literally get notifications of healing months and, and even years. This Come is going to stay up. You will get notifications from people receiving healing from these broadcasts that you're doing and God is using you so mightily. So I just prophesy over your life mm. that your voice is going to be amplified even more than it is now. And God's already done a great work in your life, but there is a, an amplifying that is happening to your voice where it's, I see like all of these loudspeakers, you know, these megaphones, um, but you don't have one megaphone. There's like so many around you. And every time you just say the name Jesus, it literally shoots out into nations and cities and countries and territories and regions and demons. All of hell knows who you are and Come they on. tremble. And I thank you, God, that you're going to continue to raise up this man of God and keep his family protected in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for this revivalist family. I thank you, God, that an increase of words of knowledge will come. I thank you, God, that it will be crystal clear in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that even in the night season, God, waking up with even more dreams, putting the pieces together. I thank you, God, for the manuscripts. I thank you, God, for the curriculum. I thank you, Father, for the whole library of curriculum that you placed in him. I thank you, Father God, that even in the old age, there'll be writings and there'll be manuscripts and there'll be constant notes and, and it'll be a, like rivers and rivers that will flow out of you. You'll never have a dry, uh, a dry time for the word of the Lord. And even when you gain knowledge, the Lord says, I'll increase that. Even as it was on Solomon's life, knowledge and wisdom and wealth shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God. And guys, if you're in the chat, you're listening and you hear a word that goes forth Go ahead and receive that for your life. Come on. Just like when you read about Esther and you read about the people in the Bible and you go, wow, that's me. I'm that, that, that pertains to me. It's the same thing because it's the word of the Lord. And so if you go, I want that for my life. Go ahead and say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that will be on my life. That portion is mine in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Come on, guys. I'm telling you, Jenny, we have to do a stream where we just prophesy words of knowledge and pray over the chat because this is so powerful. I know we've been we've been it. almost or well, over two hours right now, but me and you have oh, been since we started. Yeah, over two hours here live. But I'm telling you guys, God is moving. Be excited about what God is doing, please, guys. 
tonight please 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 make sure that you follow jenny on all the platforms make sure we bombard her website i know after i end we're gonna all bombard her website and you grab something because <laughs> we really do appreciate you jenny on our stream you pouring out i'm so glad that we linked up to do live together people some people know that we've done events in person together and now with the live streaming this is amazing we broke our record tonight guys actually the last record we had jenny was when me and you were together we had 2800 tonight we had over 3300 and we've had about 3300 for the last hour so total 3300 on youtube and facebook and this is insane guys i mean think about a, a building that seats 3300 people and those are the people that have been live watching i guarantee by the time we end we'll have over 50,000 different people come in and out and i'll send you all the numbers later jenny but i'm telling you guys Jesus. god is doing something right now there's a social media revival please so into what god is doing where we we had nine million impressions last 28 days on youtube and we had four million reach on the last month of facebook and so guys god is reaching people this is all about god we don't take credit for any of this believe me this is all god i can't be like how did you get somebody i don't know there's no way i could try to take credit it's the holy spirit it's the presence of god so guys Come so on. into what god's doing if you are blessed tonight as we said don't dine in dash there's a link there on jenny's there's a link on mine i'm going to sew into jenny i'm also going to go on the merch store i want you guys to go on the merch store if you type in merch code isaiah you're going to get a discount that's at the final checkout so once you're done checking out hit that little arrow expand it type in that merch code isaiah and you're going to get a discount on your merch listen christmas is around the corner what better place you're listen you're already going to buy stuff you're already going to go spend money so you might as well go do it on jenny's website she's wearing right there a shirt he is holy i'm wearing the Yahweh shirt. And so you guys go I grab something. One. This is amazing. You're supporting her ministry. You're supporting her family. And the finances are being used to further advance the kingdom. So Thank this is a good you. ground to sow into. Also, Jenny, before you, I, I get you off here, let us know anywhere else I can find you or anything else you wanted to talk about for your stuff as well. Um, I just wanted to say, um, cause this is streaming on Jenny Weaver Worship's page as well. Guys, I um, pinned that link in the chat right there. You can see it. And I know that Isaiah has ways to give to his ministry. I'm encouraging everybody to sow into this ministry. So Stephen and I are going to sow into this ministry. We love him and his wife. I encourage you guys to do that and become partners. And, and follow him. Follow him and go on those live streams. He goes live way more than I go live. I don't even know how he even, even has the time to do I don't that. Either. Just, and I have one child. So um, I'm still trying to, I'm still just praying about that. Because <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm going live every Friday. Like, that's a stretch. So, he goes live all the time. He loves God's people. He, has, he even has a show where you guys know he can call. Yep. Call in the other day. I'm like, I have questions. <laughs> I want to call in. This is so amazing that you take the time to do that. I don't know any other broadcast um, that I've seen that's doing that. So, guys, do that. And if you want to join my core group mentorship or get connected yes, with me, yes. you can easily go to JennyWeaverWorships.com. That's my website. The shop's on there. The, um, the core group is on there. I have a mentorship of about 800 students right now. I have, I think, 6,000 wow. students in the um, academy as wow. a whole. And so I would love to um, help you and mentor you. We have private chats and all that good stuff. So... That's it. Awesome. Jenny, thank you. We have to have you on again. I know we have Christmas coming up, everything going on, but we definitely have to have you on again. We got to do more stuff together because I'm telling you, something just powerful happens when we come together. I believe we have the same DNA of a revival, Ooh. of awakening, of deliverance. And so guys, listen, and don't get all up on here, guys, because you will get muted like, oh, are you guys asking for money? Listen, we're not taking up a 30-minute offering. We just poured out for over two hours. So if that's you, then come don't on. give. God's going to bless us either way. But those of you that support, those of you that are partners with us that support, please make sure you get something on her website i want to also help her with that and then i'm going to sew into and then i just really do appreciate it guys we're not a, doing this for the income we're doing this for the outcome so this is all about Ooh, like we'd, we'd be doing this for free regardless this is all about advancing god's kingdom on the earth and the reality is just like it takes finances for you to live it takes finances for us to live and so so guys jenny thank you so much um i'll get you thank off can i know you. what time is it for you eight nine ten eleven o'clock are you a night owl jenny you know I'm not going to be able to sleep after this, oh, right? Okay. So, so she's a night owl anyway. So, you know, I, I was like, man, I feel so bad we're keeping her so late. I stream hours, so I'm kind of like already used to it. But guys, um... I'll, it, she'll probably get in the chat after and also post her links, yes, Jenny, if you don't mind doing that. And then my moderators on YouTube, the, I already pinned the links for her uh, clothing. So just copy only her clothing moderators in, the, in YouTube and go ahead and just spam that in the YouTube for me, please, all my moderators. Aww, and then we'll get that spammed up so you guys can get over there and order something. If you only have a limited amount of money and you can either
either give or buy something on the website, go buy something on the website before you come and give because I want to bless her and her family and so into what God is doing. Idea. Go for give. It. And then go to my website because we have stop, buy now, pay stop, later. stop. Oh, and she so, has financing. How could you beat that? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So give to Isaiah and then go to my stop. website. Stop. I'm going to mute her. Hold later. on. Let me mute her. I just muted her. All right, guys. Thank you, Jenny, for being here. We love you and appreciate you. We'll Bye see you soon. You. Take Bye. care. God Thank bless. You guys. What an awesome time. You know, it's a good when you're arguing over where they should be sewing into like you sew into her no sew into him and so that's always a good sign guys those are the type of people that you want on and you know we bring on people that they don't ask for anything they're not about their money they don't care about the money and we want to bless them we want to sew into them and so you guys are helping us do that thank you to all of our monthly partners we could not do this without you as you know i'm only traveling once a month now so think about that i was traveling i was doing like eight to ten events per month traveling three minimum weekends a month and now I'm traveling once a month. So you guys are enabling us to spend the hours to prepare the streams, to get our content ready. You guys know I spend eight to 10 hours per stream on Friday nights getting ready. And just like that, thank you so much, Alexandria on uh, YouTube for posting her link. Just like that, guys, this Friday night, I'm going to be most likely having a video of a deliverance I did, and then I'll be on screen telling you what I did, how to do it, and giving you practical lessons. I wish I could bring 3,000 of you with me to do deliverances, but you can't fit in a room, okay? So I'm gonna bring you in virtually, show you a deliverance, I'll blur out the person for the sake of security and dignity, and then I'll talk about the deliverance, what happened, how did we start, what do we do when it stops, all that type of stuff. Awesome. Thank you, Yvonne Tony Hill. So tonight was so good as always. Thank you. We love you. So here's what I'm going to do now, guys. I know you guys are all giving. You're clicking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the donations coming through, coming on screen. I'm going to read the donations here. Let me get a little bit closer. Okay. I'm going to read the donations and then I'm going to hang out just for a bit here with the chat and we'll be live again Friday night. Also next week, I'll be on vacation with my family. We rarely go on vacation. We go on about two vacations per year, but okay, listen, because I love you guys so much. And I want to keep sewing and feeding you guys and sewing into you guys spiritually. We will have video uploads on YouTube when I'm gone. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to have videos be uploaded each night so you don't have to miss me too much. And then I will be back on Friday for a regular stream. And then the week after is Christmas. So we're going to change our schedule up a little bit. So amen. Thank you, Matt Cruz. Love you, bro. All right. I'm fired up, guys. I'm telling you, I'm in the overflow. I'm just like, I can't get the smile off my face because of what God did. And I, I want to do more ministering on the stream. So I think I'm going to start doing streams where I just prophesy over you guys and I do words of knowledge and pray because we can do that literally all night. You guys, understand the gifts. When they activate, when they flow, they flow. And so the Bible says that you can take turns prophesying. So I love even have Jenny on if she wants to, to just prophesy over you guys, call you guys out by name, give you guys words, encourage you guys and minister to the chat. And now I can do that because I have YouTube and Facebook on one chat screen. I could look at both of you all at once, both platforms at once. So if you guys want to do that, we can do that soon. So that'll be awesome. Okay. And everyone's giving the merch. Yes, love the merch. Okay, everyone go buy merch. Everyone, so I'm going to start reading their donations now. I also have Venmo. I have Zelle. And I have my monthly partner. It's all on screen right there. Thank you to everyone that's been here. We broke our record. I want to say we peaked at 3,300 tonight. And we stayed around 3,250, 3,300 the whole night. My, guys, it's mind-blowing to me. I'm not, trust me, don't think I'm like arrogant. Like, oh, it's no big deal. I'm, I'm, you get, your mind's blown that 3,300 people are watching. I, my mind's blown as well. So, it's amazing. Yeah, I have a merch store as well too, guys. But go buy Jenny's tonight, please. Thank you. But my mind's blown as well because I'm in awe of what God is doing. Um, our call-ins went from 600 viewers to 1,500 on Monday. Everything's doubled now since we went on both. So it's just incredible, guys. All the work, all the time we're putting into, we're not playing. We're doing a lot. So God is moving. Amen. We love you guys and we appreciate you guys. All right. Here we go. Let me read through these. What app is Pastor using? I'm using a computer. I'm using OBS. Thank you everyone on uh, all my YouTube moderators that are spamming and posting links and stuff like that. I really do love you guys and I really do appreciate you guys. Let me start reading through these donations here. And then like I said, if you guys want to give and you don't have PayPal or Zelle or Venmo, you can also give on my website, isaiahsaldivar.com slash partner. It's very easy. You don't need to type in all this information and it's easy. If you want to find out where I'm traveling, isaiahsaldivar.com slash schedule. All my information, y'all, is on my website. Just navigate around a bit, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and type this because I just feel real nice tonight, but there it is. All my stuff's on there. I'll be in uh, Texas in January and I'll be in North Carolina in February. I don't have the info on North Carolina posted, but it's gonna be the first weekend of February. 
Matt said, what a powerful stream. Everyone stay... Wait, I could read it right here. Why am I looking over there? What a powerful stream. Everyone stay connected. There's not many who get fed this kind of way with the uncompromising truth. Thank you, Matt Cruz. I love you and appreciate you, bro. Thank you, Alexandra. There's her stuff. Everyone that's logging off, thank you. Good night. Everyone that's new, I'm going to go ahead and hang out for a bit here. I'm going to read all the donations. So if you gave, I'm going to read that out now and all that. Nathan said, what's your PC specs? Bro, don't get me started talking nerd because I could my my tech, I speak two languages. I speak English and I speak nerd. So if you start getting me talking about PCs and cameras and algorithms, I'll start nerding out here hardcore. So don't make me do that. Come, <laughs> come to the Philippines. I used to go to the Philippines. I've been there several times. I'm in California. Okay, all my events are there. I know you guys are going to ask, where are you going to be? Where are you all? I'm only traveling once a month. I'm live Monday, Tuesday, Friday. So there's my dates on my website. There you guys go. Okay, let me read these. You're amazing. Thank you. You're amazing. Just ordered some sweaters and shirts. Awesome, Misty. Thank you for doing that. Watching from Singapore. Welcome from Singapore. Welcome from South Africa. I would love to go to South Africa. Yeah, I don't want to nerd out on you because then everyone's going to be bored here. Let me read through some of these and then we can talk about whatever after. Okay, Anonymous, thank you. Lori Herrera said, thank you for preaching the bold message. I love the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bless you, man of God. Thank you, Lori. Sierra Ball, um, I'll write you about that and we can talk about that. It's about deliverance and I'll also talk about that on Friday, but you can message me too, Sierra. Malia Morocco said, pray for throat cancer for my husband. Yes, Malia, I will. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Sue Rhodes, thank you so much. Jay Malcolm said, may God cover, bless and keep you and your family. Thank you, Jay Malcolm. Yvonne Tunnyhill, you are a legend. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Akela Delock said, thank you so much for what you do. Your teachings have changed my life. God bless you and your family. And then I see your prayer request. Disciples Remodeling said, thank you for your awesome words. I'm sorry I missed two services. We listen to you every day and at work. Customers are always asking for your page to be shared with them. They're always interested in your ministry and what's about. We love you, Casey and David Mack. Casey and David Mack, if you ever try and leave our community, I will cry. So don't even think about trying and leaving our streams. We love you so much and appreciate you. And I hope you stay forever, okay? Some of you that, you know, you you leave and then I never see you again, you make me sad. So please stay. We love you. I notice when you guys are gone. Don B said, please pray for all the areas of my life and family. Thank you and God bless you and your beautiful family. Don, thank you so much. James Snyder, thank you so much. Andrea LaCastro, Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for being a warrior of Christ and teaching others to battle. Thank you so much. That's a very kind word. Yvonne Gooden. Gooden? Gooden? Gooden. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn. Amen. Thank you, Yvonne. Angel Angelic. Thank you so much. Uh, Rebecca Lucas. Say, may God continue to bless your ministry. And Jenny's. Thank you, Rebecca. Jim. Jim, Jim, Jim. You're a legend, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Said, come on, somebody. Gerald Gutierrez said, love you, bro. I'm fired up. You're a blessing to this generation. Thank you, Gerald. You're a blessing. Daniel Ortega said, pray for my family. I will. Anonymous said, God keep raising, may God keep raising up the army. Len Briel Way said, wonderful teaching. Shelly Gallup said, a more breakthrough tonight. Thank you. Kelly Waters said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for you, Isaiah. Thank you, Kelly. Christine uh, C. DeBaca, thank you so much. Randy Geiger, thank you. Tamisha said healing. Amen. Thank you. Karina Alvarado. Alvarado. Karina Alvarado. Thank you so much. I think some of you just stay around because you want me to mispronounce everybody's name. Welcome from Jamaica. I love the accent. I would love to go to Jamaica. Tamika Passon said, praise God. You and Jenny, such sweet spirits. Thank you so much. Anonymous said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Denisha. Thank you so much. A lot of new givers. Thank you guys. Real cold. Mary Alvarez said, I was blessed. Thank you. Michael N., thank you so much. Mary, thank you. Ryan Watkins, thank you. Geneva Wick, thank you. Jeremy Barmore, thank you. Uh, Andrea Dugan said, thank you, thank you for advancing the kingdom of God. God bless you. Thank you so much. Eddie Lopez said, tonight was fire. Thank you, Eddie. Priscilla Delgado said, God bless you. Heidi Hyatt said, God bless you greatly. Thank you, Heidi. Eric Chapman, thank you so much for that. LaShondria Streeter said, bless you, Isaiah and Jenny, for your obedience. I want to sow the seed in both of you. I love you both very much. LaShondria, I speak on behalf of me and Jenny. We love you very much. You're a legend. Thank you. Ashley Terror said, great live stream as always. Ter Terror, I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry. Billy Stamper, the broadcast pulled me out of a funk today. Come on, Billy. Thank you so much. Jesenia said, thank you. Thank you, Jesenia. Johnny F said, thank you for everything, Isaiah. God bless. Shayna said, praise Jesus. So thankful for all that you do, Isaiah. I'm so thankful for Jenny and all she does. The prayers were powerful and I know I received deliverance. Please do more live stream like this one today. 
So much healing flowed. Thank you, Shayna, and I'm glad you gave me the feedback. We will do it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Dina, for the first timer. She said, first time you're here. Thank you for being here. I'm glad you said you think it was awesome. Thank you. Jessica Rios said, thank you for the message. May God continue to bless you and the favor be upon you. Patrice Duncan, thank you. Maria, uh, Mariella Madrigal said, thank you so much. I'll read you guys' comments in a minute. I'm just reading the donations. There's a lot of them coming in. Cindy, thank you. Crystal Brandt, thank you. Luke Blakenship, you're a legend. He said, I love you, bro. I'm taking what you're teaching and applying it. It's been nothing short of life changing for me and my friends. Keep up the good work. God is using you and will continue in great and mighty ways. Much love. L Luke, we love you, bro. Anonymous said, second time I watched live and I was in tears. God bless you. Thank you so much for what you do for the kingdom. Anonymous, welcome to the family. We love you. Erica, um, uh, how do you say that? Our mender is. Thank you so much for that big donation. And thank you all of you, Anonymous. Okay. Whew. Let me get a breath in, guys. All right. Let's go to our Venmo here. Let's go to our Venmo. Thank you all of you that are still here and still hanging out with us. You guys are legends. We appreciate you guys. Lots of donations coming in. As you guys know, the first priority when I get off here is sending Jenny a seed. Even though she says she doesn't want it, she just wants us to support her website. I'm still going to do that and we're going to support her website in Jesus' name because that's what we do. We bless people and she blessed us tonight and poured out into us and so we're going to pour back into her. And thank you all of you that are becoming monthly partners. I see you guys here. You'll get those 70 messages right when I get off. If you want to become a monthly partner, you can go ahead and do that on the link right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you guys and appreciate you guys. All right. Oh, man. That was a mouthful. Lots of donations tonight. Uh, they're going to be delayed on screen. So if your donation has not come up on screen and I read your name, just know that it's already been there. I'm glad Miguel said I needed this today. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. You're amazing. Okay, let me read these Venmo donations. If you gave through the website, I'll be able to see them when I get off, so don't don't panic. Wow, okay. <laughs> lots, lots, lots. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hold on. We're gonna we're we're gonna All right, Lita, thank you so much. Tammy White said blessings. Please keep checking your prayers. Absolutely, Tammy. Thank you so much. God bless you. And I'm gonna be contacting you soon, Tammy. Oh wait, why did I lose that? Okay. Jose Acosta. So we met at Arizona Revival. I'm the guy. Oh, Jose. Thank you so much. Jose was the guy I talked to that was addicted to drugs two weeks ago and God had delivered him. Listen to what Jose says, okay? I hope he doesn't mind you reading this, but I'm going to read this because you guys don't know who he is. He said, I will become a monthly partner and donate the money I used to use on my addiction. Wow. Thank you so much, Jose Acosta. God has delivered him from drugs and addiction two weeks ago. And now he says he's going to take the drug money and use it for the kingdom. Thank you, Jose. We love you, bro. I appreciate you. Ray Young, thank you so much, bro. Andrew Rivenberg said, Bread, thank you, Al and thank you, Alexandra Rojas. She said, Thank you, brother. I love you and your family. Praise the Lord. Tonight's fire. In agreement for strongholds gone. Thank you, Alexandra. I've been wanting to do to do a teaching on strongholds. And, you know, Jenny is so easy to flow with. And I thought, you know, Jenny, why don't you talk about rejection? I'll talk about strongholds and we'll just flow together. Usually I wouldn't do like a teaching like that with another person. Oh, on the guest, but I thought she'd be awesome because it's just, we flow together so good. And so I'm glad that I got to do that. Uh, the strongholds, that was really good. And I'm the one that taught it. So amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. So good tonight. And what Jenny taught on was amazing. I got rocked when she talked about rejection, shared her testimony and then prayed the prayer and broke it. It was so, so perfect and good. Alicia Lyle said, thank you. And Jenny so much. Appreciate you guys. God bless you both. Luke Ledeski said, thank you. Love the vids. Asia Rosario said, being obedient to the Father, thank you for using Isaiah, Lord, and getting this word out to the world. Jenny, you're such an inspiration. We love you to so many. Christina said, sealing my deliverance, healed in my body, my skin healed. Amen. Ashley Scherter, thank you so much. She put a, a crying face and a mind-blown face. Awesome. Maria Rowlett said, thank you. Oxian Taurus said, God bless. Cool name, man. Courtney said, thank you for your ministry. Chatty said, God bless you. Steven Mercado said for tonight's live, God bless. Pastor Steven, thank you so much for that donation. We love you and appreciate you. Jenny said, I can't wait to be back. I love y'all. We can't wait to have you back on, Jenny. Susan Metcalf said, thank you and keep going strong. Andrea Brown, thank you so much. Ruth Rodriguez said, God bless. Nestor Palacios said, God, uh, God, Isaiah, you and your family, such a blessing to our family, Nestor and Anna. Nestor and Anna, we love you and appreciate you. Catherine Saunders said, thank you for your obedience and submission to God. There was a shift tonight. Nancy said, blessings. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I'm overwhelmed again. We're breaking records again, guys. There's still 1,600 of you listening to me talk. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Let me read these last couple that have come in while I was reading those. 
Raven said, thank you for your dedication. Enjoy your week break. Go enjoy your family. Love you. Thank you, bro. Aretha Haven said, breaking strongholds. Lena Harrington said, blessings to you and your ministry. Uh, to Deliverance, healing, teach me, build me for the kingdom of God. Judy, thank you so much. Okay, guys. We're going to cut, cut off here in a second. I'm going to read a couple of these comments. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Uh, the monthly partner place is right here. Let me type this out for you. Boom. IsaiahSaldivar.com slash partner. If you want to become a monthly partner, you're going to get 70 messages from yours truly. I need a haircut in Jesus' name. Okay, and you're going to get the partner's calls from the past, the future, and you're going to get 25% off my merch store permanently. So there you go. All those little perks for becoming a partner. Nino and Nina, we love you and appreciate you. Thank you so much for all your support. We love you. Audio interface or preamp plus PC specs. My audio interface is a Go XLR Mini. Okay, get ready to write this down. With a cloud lifter that's a mic booster with a Shure SM7B. And my computer is an i7-8700K. I have a RTX 2080, I believe it is. And I have... 32 gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes of solid state drive, a terabyte of Evo storage, 970 Samsung Evo. My cameras, <laughs> I'm getting nerdy. You asked for it. My cameras are, yes, awesome, Nathan. Nerd language. My cameras, I have a Sony. Uh, these are my new cameras I just got. Sony A7S III with a 1.4 G Master 24 millimeter. Then I have a Sony A7C with a 1.4 aperture 24 millimeter G Master lens on both of those, same lens both the 24 millimeter G master and I'm using OBS and the way I'm getting alerts on screen is through stream elements and the way I'm merging the streams together is through restream so I'm using three different programs to be able to do what we're doing here so if you saw my screen it's amazing get the new 3090 I want to Ethan but they're out of stock everywhere aren't they I want the new 3080 because I a lot of my processing I'm using on my graphics card to do all my streaming all right Thank you so much for subscribing, Meredith. Your first time, lots of first timers. Recommended books for Deliverance When Pigs Move In by Don Dickerman. That's my most recommended. Sounds like the weapon you forgot to <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm a nerd. But you have an iPhone. Watch it, Jason. My mother and father-in-law bought me this new iPhone, so don't be a hater. If you don't have an iPhone, you need to get saved in Jesus' name. We cast that Android spirit out of you in Jesus' name. Yeah, we need to have Luke Holter back on again. Your preaching at Fresh Start was fire. Thank you, Jamar. We're going to be having those uploaded plus my Doorkeepers of Revival conference. I preached that uploaded. And my camera just froze. Okay, speaking of technology, my camera just froze. And it's not even hot. So I don't know what happened here. Let me try to... Look at this. I'm bragging about all these cameras and technology. And then my camera freezes. Which is so weird. I don't know why it's frozen. Okay, well, good thing I have this other camera. Android Spirit, come out in Jesus' name. Nerd alert. Thank you, guys. I love you guys. All of you from YouTube, all of you from Facebook, I love you equally. You YouTube people, though, you're no joke. You guys are, you guys, you guys are no joke. You guys stay. There's almost a thousand of you still on here, so you guys are crazy. I've had Luke Holter on in the past. I'll have him on again, though, for sure. Let me see if I can get my camera back on. What in the world? Why did that happen? It's not cool. It's not cool, camera. Why'd you do that to me? All right, well, now I'm going to probably end up freezing. No, now I froze both my cameras. Why did I do that, guys? <laughs> I just froze both my cameras. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to fix this. Nobody panic. Hold on. Yes, look at everyone's like, now that I'm talking about the technology, both my cameras freeze. I tried fixing one and it froze the other one. All right, anyways, we're going to get off right now. Anyways, guys, there you go. You have my frozen screen. Let me go to the ending screen. I love you guys. Come back. Come back on Friday night. I'm glad that just happened now. Literally, as I'm talking about technology, never happened. My camera freezes. All right, anyways, come back on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about the iPhone 12. All right, come back on Friday night. I got to get off here anyways. I got stuff I got to get done tonight. Friday night, I'll see you guys. We'll be doing our deliverance teaching live. It's going to be incredible. Don't miss it. Love you all. Thank you for giving. Thank you for sewing. Thank you, Anne Marie Vargas. 
And they're both of those anonymous that just came through. We love you guys. Good night, Misty. Good night, James. Good night, Saab. Good night, Anna, Cindy, Trinity, Ryan, uh, Raven, Ella, James, Lashandria, Stephanie, Luke, Rebecca, Miss, Alexandria, Bible, Canary, Geneva, Nik Nikaha, Edmund, Miguel, Rebecca, Esther, Ashley. We love you guys. You guys already knew I was going to talk over here. So, Ashley, Juliet. All right, cool. Love you guys. See ya.